What's up, yeah. guys? <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hammondville Horror. We are live. Thank you for visiting. I am Clint. I am Don. And we are here joined today with a very special guest. We have one Beatrice Bubbly here today. How are you? Oh, and you said it right the very first time. Well, we rehearsed I, this. I, 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 we I was being videos. careful. We had I was to. being careful. I heard awesome. a couple other people say it first. So, uh, yeah, because uh, no, normally practicing. nobody gets that. Awesome. Well, you did it perfect. You get an A. I would, I would have screwed it up. I was, I was rehearsing in the mirror. I'm like, <laughs> nah, bubbly, keep going. Bubbly. Like, try it again. Do it again. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just didn't trust myself. So that's why I like Clint. Do it. If he was going if anybody's going to screw it up, it's going to be him. Well, it's like, yeah, isn't yeah. there a cough syrup, Buckley? There, there used to be, I think, way back in the day. Buckley yes. with a so, CK. So it sounds like that. And we are no hose barred. And I will tell you, that tasted like shit. Oh, I'm but sure. It got rid of your cough. It worked. Like everybody says, Robitussin, if you got that stuff and your mom was cruel enough to give it to you, you didn't you didn't keep her awake for eight hours. That stuff worked. Because it had wow. turpentine in it. Pro Good or paint Lord. Yeah, something something like yeah, <laughs> something similar to it. But let's let's digress from cough syrup, but I know what she's talking about. I know what she's yeah. trying to say. Yeah. How are you, my dear? <laughs> I'm just wonderful. And I've got my little baby with me. Oh, baby Freddie. Baby Freddie, you know he does grow on you. He does. I mean, I'm. T I gotta tell you, like, I love this little face. You know how people love boxers. Or, well, boxers are cute, but you know some of the dogs that on first sight would be kind of ugly. You know, with a smushed in face, but oh, they grow yeah. on you. There's a cuteness in their ugliness. This, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's got a cuteness. Anyway, that, that's <laughs> damn. I love one of those There's dogs that constantly has their tongue sticking out. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Cuteness I remember this ugliness. we lived in an apartment building in the city and there was this lady that would always carry this poor little poodle and it was always uh, hung. every time we saw it you just feel like kind of pushing that tongue back in but anyway yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. anyway right oh, my back out come, i'm sure yeah you do have a lot of little <laughs> toys she and she and i wanted to buy a lot of your little toys that you've you've put on uh facebook that i've seen and and my and my action figure cool. It's Man. not a it's not a doll, yeah. it's an action figure. Hey yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that will whoop G.I. Joe's ass any day there. of the week. Yeah, you Amanda Kruger, you everything bet. she's been through, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's whooping Duke's ass any day of the week. Although I've lost all her little her little things that the come rosary. with it in her life. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what happened to her rosary and her what is it when you buy dolls? Well, action figures, no, and you get the um what are they called? Not props. Accessories. 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 Thank you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, my Amanda, I wanted to get, I've been talking to somebody, not the person who made the doll, but another person who makes little jewelry. And I wanted that to, them to make accessories like a, a glove for yeah. Amanda. And then also like a little skull face so that you can like take the mask on or off. And it's, you know, when she turns into the skull, the skeleton. Thank you. So, yeah. anyway. So she'll come with accessories one day. <laughs> Guys, you all got to listen to this. That Anybody really that does cool. these custom things, please. Absolutely. Oh God. Yeah, come Get up with, off. yeah, Barbie-sized glove and and little mask. I'm sure somebody can That'd do be, it on our group. So out of our 1,600 awesome. members, somebody can do it. There you go. They have to. They have to be able to. We so, have some yeah. talented people. We do. We do got some talented mm -hmm. people. But speaking of talented people, that's why you're here. <laughs> Who? Clint. No. Yeah, that's what yeah, me. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. And I'm here to clap. Yay, <laughs> yeah. Don and Clint. So, uh, yeah. so anybody, uh, anybody who follows our group um, um, should be familiar with horror movies, and of course, they would be familiar with with your role in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Five, uh, where you played Amanda, uh, Freddie's mother. Uh, I'm not sure if they actually credit her as as Amanda Kruger. Is it Amanda Kruger? Yeah, is... yeah, it is. Okay. They have it as okay. Amanda Kruger. And in fact, okay. there's, I mean, there's some strange little, to me, it's, it's kind of an oversight or a blooper because they have her as Amanda Kruger in the, um, when she's getting raped, um, and oh, the know, name her, tag, her name tag. Yeah. you know, and she wouldn't, she would have been sister Mary, but whatever. So it is what it okay. is. <laughs> yeah. Many, many in inconsistencies throughout those films, but <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. I watched it again last night and I, and I did notice a couple, but, uh, I'll forgive most of them because, uh. You know, it it is uh, Such a an, good movie. an iconic you know um, film franchise, and and uh, what it is now is is nothing more than than famous history. So uh, yeah, a, sure. a part of part of that, of course, is you. And and if we didn't thank you already, thank you so much for uh, hopping on here to talk to us because this is this is pretty cool. A little oh, surreal. Thank you. 
I love, I've been trying to get her on here forever. And I, I, like I said, off mic, I was like, I feel like I got her nerves so much, but I was, I just wanted to get you on here because you're such a delight to talk to. Like oh, every cool. interview that I've watched your, you know, your, your conversations that you have with, with the people on Facebook and just your, you know, just overall, you know, way that you handle yourself. It's so great to see how you are at conventions oh, and thanks. just, you know, it's, it's, I was like, she's perfect. Like she's, <laughs> she's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Absolutely. And except so for we're, today, we're, except for you guys' interview for you guys, I'll be like, yeah. I don't yeah. you know. What? I don't know. But see, yeah. We're okay two with word, that because two that, word answers. You know, it's, yeah. it's yeah. fine. Uh-huh. It's yeah. candid. It's natural. We'll just it's talk. Flowing. You sit back. It's, it's right. okay. Yeah. You just sit back. Yeah. That'll be the day you, that I'm quiet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And we love that you, we love that you like to talk because we like to talk. And yeah. speaking of talking, mm-hmm. So we're, of yeah. course, we're going to get to Nightmare 5 without a shadow of a doubt. But mm-hmm. I want to talk about the two movies that you have behind you. Oh, yes. So Matinee, if I'm not mistaken, when I looked that up, that did come out under another name, Midnight Matinee. Is that right? Yeah. It's come under Matinee, Midnight Matinee, Matinee Massacre, um, and any other name they can put it under so that they don't have to give me residuals. Oops. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I'm no, not, seriously. We're, and I can't edit it. We're live now. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. No, I don't care. I really don't care at this point. It's, <laughs> they were all about the same time. Like if it, in 89, my gosh, it was kind of the year I was in, I starred in both those films. I think we did Elm Street that year. It was like the year that it was my year. That was my year. It was the beginning and the end. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I did not get residuals from either of those two. Canadian films and which is one of the reasons I so love Elm Street because you know even though my screen time was so much less than in those I get my checks every couple couple three four times a year and all the conventions and all that good stuff so but yes mm-hmm. so did you ever see it either of those either of you seen either of those I I've tried to find that name on YouTube and I found like a really horrible quality and oh isn't that that awful when I saw it too like it's all kind of yeah, spread it's out so, long and yeah, I'm like, I don't know if I can watch it. And, and, and you know, it's I tried, but I'm like, you know what? I'll find some kind of version on eBay, I'm sure I can buy. And I would, I would buy that and I'd buy quarantine. They and do, Clint's, yeah. Clint's got another. So when me and him were talking, so I know those two and I know your other ones, but Clint wants to bring those up, don't you, Clint? Mm-hmm. What's your other two movies that you want to bring up to her that she's in? Oh, well, I mean, everybody talks about, um, uh, stake out and oh. um, um, shoot to kill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, those are some pretty cool movies. I mean, uh, it must have been pretty awesome being on screen with, um, you know, um, Jesus Christ, Emilio Estevez, Richard, Richard, Richard Dreyfus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and mm-hmm. even um, so, stake out also. Uh, oh, what the heck was his name? The Beautiful Eyes, Scottish, the bad guy. Um, oh, me, me. Say I'm a Scottish, Scottish name. It's a, like it's a very it's a very Scottish kind of name. Me, because I'm Scottish. No, it wasn't and... you, dear. Oh, well, I tried to be cute, but okay. <laughs> well, it's another... Aiden Quinn. Yes, thank you, thank there you, you Aiden Quinn. Yeah. It's so funny because he was in that film, and um, the woman I go to for massage, whenever I go, she goes, "Oh, Aiden was just on the table before you." We, I keep not meeting, <laughs> I keep not seeing him, but you know, it was so funny that we end up anyway. <laughs> occupying but the same space occupying right. the same space yeah because he was the only one that didn't get in oh this sounds terrible but he yes i was just about to say when they, i'll say it he was the only one that didn't get into bed with me and when we filmed <laughs> <laughs> no but everyone oh. got but it was on but believe me it was on screen it was in front of the camera so it was okay right. yeah. <laughs> i think and, you guys probably you probably heard I, I i i tell the story a lot just because it was very funny when when we we're doing stakeout um and and it shows the character of of Richard Dreyfuss, we were doing the scene between Emilio Estevez and I, um, where, you know, I play his wife and he's at home Mm -hmm. and Richard has called him, um, I think because he's, he's about to open up a bottle of wine and he's trying to, you know, go dry. And so there's the phone call and I come into the bedroom and, you know, I walk up to Emilio while he's talking on the phone and I crawl into bed with him. And at the end of the conversation, Richard Dreyfuss says, kiss Carol for me. And my character's name is Carol. And Mm -hmm. so Emilio kisses me. (laughs) And then this was not in the script, but Richard Dreyfuss goes, no, lower. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then, and then while we're filming and then, um, but what I meant about his character, not only is he funny, which I think everyone would expect, but he's just also a great guy because 
usually if you have offline um you know voiceover stuff you you're not going to come up like the big stars never come to set on those days or generally don't come to set somebody will just read it for you right but now richard came every day and even though he didn't he wasn't in front of the camera that day he came and he sat you know behind the camera just to deliver the lines which is so sweet because you know usually it's just whoever would deliver them so he's delivering them making up all this ad lib stuff and then and then at the end of the scene, he suddenly says threesome and he comes running in front of the camera and jumped into bed with me and Emilio. So I was sandwiched between Emilio Estevez and Richard Dreyfus, And I'm like, okay, this is not so bad. And then, um, uh, oh shoot, I'm, oh, who was it? Roger Spottiswood? Was that direct? I think that was the director. Oh, yeah. anyway, I think it was, yeah. Clint's got it. We got it. You, can, you got it? So whoever was yeah. the director, he was wonderful. Anyway, John oh, no, Badham. John Badham, John Badham, yeah. right. Spotty's what I think did the other one uh, that you said should kill. But anyway, so John Badham, so John Badham says, "Oh, me too," and he jumps into bed, <laughs> you know. And so if anyone, if anyone ever hears this interview um, and and happened to work on it and was an editor or something, I just I don't know where the you know it, it was on the cutting room floor, of course, because but I would love to have those off outtakes. Could you imagine? Yes, I, I, I love I love to be a I love to be a. <laughs> Emilio Estevez and Richard Dreyfus sandwich too. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I mean, I'm, right? me too. I'm just, I'm, I backflip Absolutely. right into, into, the, into the bed. Into the bed. Yeah. It was a great, it was a great threesome. And what's so funny too, is that Richard Dreyfus has like a, a knack for opening bottles of wine because <laughs> he does it here and he does it in jaws. Right. And oh. it's hilarious when he does it. Cause it's like, it, you just watch him. And the whole time he's talking to Lorraine Gary and he's talking to, uh, Roy Shriver, he's just, he never takes his, his eyes off them. I'm like, damn, this dude's professional. Right. Like, he knows how to do it. He, he does. Knows how he, to do it. He, he, yeah. He, he was really marvelous, wonderful, wonderful guy and just so personable. And, you know, he, 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 you know, hung out with me afterwards. And, you know, I, I had a, I had a um, company for actors. I, it was called ProTrack, Professional Training for Actors. And we do, you know, host different workshops. And um, so I asked him if he would come on to ours and this was we were filming in vancouver this mm -hmm. is back when i lived in vancouver and he's like sure sure so he comes you know and sits there and talks to the actors refuses to take any money and you know just a wonderful great guy and so was emilio he was he was a sweetheart we we went out a, quite a lot and in fact when i went down to la when i moved to la when i was doing stakeout um he was filming something he was directing emilio was filming was he he directs you know mostly mostly mm -hmm. he directs his own films um mm -hmm. and i it might have been i think his brother might have been in it charlie sheen mm. anyway so he'd he'd invite me on set because i was living there you know and i don't know just a just a really really great guy it's so wild like it's just it's just such a small world like that yeah for you sure would get, you would get to to run in uh in him again after doing that and it's like you know remember me yeah. probably so and it's it's like that's really wild to be, you know, everybody's like, oh, she's just in Nightmare 5. It's like, guys, look, she's she's been she's been next to she's some been around. Pretty, pretty damn amazing people. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> or, been in like, bed with been around. She's been in bed with me <laughs> yeah. and and Richard Dreyfuss yeah. like, really? You, you know us nuns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always the quiet ones. Always the yeah, quiet yeah. ones. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else I was in bed with. No, anyway. <laughs> Lord no. almighty. So, Whew. anyway. Whew. <laughs> So, right. Yeah, you played nuns a couple of times. Uh, yeah. Weren't you cast as a nun in Shoot to Kill? I was, yes, I was an undercover cop um, dressed as a nun ah. in Shoot to Kill. Um, what else was I nun? I think most of my other nun roles were on stage because I, I was I was nuns many times. I nuns was, are dangerous, man. I don't care what man. anybody says. They yeah. are dangerous. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you, you you don't know what they have under their habit. So no, no, it's. Uh, yeah. You know what? I can't. I'm not. I'm not falling for these traps. I'm not going to do it. Clint knows how I am. I can go Ooh. any direction. I'm not doing it. I'm not oh, gonna do I, it. I thought. I thought you meant corny jokes, like saying some oh. of them have bad habits. Ah. Some bad habits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Up, Clint. I'm gonna mute your ass now. No, I actually I did it on 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 Instagram. Um, I put up a little thing with. Do you guys know uh, Father Evil? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. What a what a fun character! So I just met him at the New Jersey Horror Con, and you know he's he's a priest. So I thought, oh, what the heck? So and he asked if we could do photos. So we did some photos together, mm -hmm. um, and then so I put up on on Instagram one time a photo because he there's one he, 
shot where he's looking down at me. I'm dressed in my Amanda, you know, as the nun. So I'm looking up at him and it looks like he's telling me a joke. So I put a little thing saying, um, um, he says, so this laundry, this, um, the guy that works at the laundromat goes to the nunnery and says, <laughs> anyone have, it wasn't filthy habits. What was the Any word? Dirty like habits. Yeah. Dirty, dirty habits, habits or yeah. something like that. <laughs> and, she, you know, Amanda's like, oh, you know, anyway. <laughs> that dude's awesome. Hey, yeah. we've, I've, we've seen him walk around a couple of times with the cons that we've been mm -hmm. to. Isn't that wild? Uh, like you just create this character cosplay and then mm -hmm. now he's, it, he's the thing. It happens. It's, it's, uh, it's nuts. And that's. Yeah. I think that's what's crazy about you too is that, you know, like you said, you didn't have a lot of screen time, but you go to conventions and people come to see you. Like you have a lot of people that come to see you. And that's, it's amazing because, you know, you did have such a, you know, a, a small part, but it, it was, it was oh. what you did on screen that, that mattered. Like even watching like the other nightmares, like Nightmare 3, you know, when, when Amanda Kruger was in it more, you know, yeah. when, when the doc saw, her walking in the cemetery and everything. It's like, but her, she just didn't have any, there was just nothing to her. Like it was just like no personality. You, at least when you were on screen, it was like, that's definitely Freddie's mom without a doubt. Like you made the most of your screen time. And again, somebody that's on screen for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. It's like, sometimes you leave a lasting impact. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it's more of, um, well, in, in terms of, Amanda Kruger and number three, Nan Martin, um, rest her soul. She, you know, it's a, it's just a different take, right? Mm -hmm. She was more, um, you know, and I'm really glad I didn't know it existed. I, when I was cast, I had no idea because I, at that point I hadn't seen any other film on the Elm Street franchise except the first one. So I didn't know that Amanda had ever been portrayed and mm -hmm. nobody told me. So I thought I was the first one playing her and I'm glad because if I had, then you know, for continuity, just knowing myself, I'd try to match that. And that's mm -hmm. just weird. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. I would have just talked, for, you know, she, it just, it wasn't what I felt. And I hadn't, I wasn't even a mother at that time, but I, I felt for sure that it couldn't be easy for her. Like no mother loves to kill her own kid, you know? So that was important to me to portray that it was not a choice she wanted to make, mm -hmm. that she loved her kid. Um, so in, in, in Nan's character, it was more, yeah, you didn't really, you didn't catch that. But that, you know, I wouldn't say there was nothing in her. Performance. No, no, I mean, it was just a different interpretation. Yeah, it's just a different interpretation. Yeah, you know, she wanted to be, you know, and who knows what the director had told her to do, you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember even in mine, you know, they were, you know, we we're sitting there trying to figure out, you know, what, what is she? Is she, is she dead? Is she alive? Is she a ghost? Like, what is this sort of, you know? And it's kind of cool, you know, when you think about it, that Amanda Kruger, like, Freddie, I mean, she can kind of exist in both worlds, in the dead world and the mm -hmm. real world. And I, I think, know. and I think too, with Amanda Kruger, um, again, regardless of screen time, I mean, there's certain characters where they have a lot of screen time, but they don't really, you know, it's not much um, pivotal, you know, it's not very pivotal to the, mm -hmm. to the story. And there's other ones that just come and go in films and, but they're pivotal character. You need them, even if it's a short amount of time. And Amanda Kruger, certainly for that story was a very necessary component. Like you can interchange who gets killed, but you can't really, if there's going to be a mother, there's going to be a mother, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, and she is, she's very central to, to the story in the sense of, at least to the backstory of, of Freddy Krueger. And I right. hope my my book brings that out even more because I can't I can't wait I, I literally yeah. cannot yeah. wait to to get my hands on that and read that in. Thank you. I yeah. I hope so. You know, really. I mean, I I I've seen um, from fans' work like you know, there's some places. Um, a lot of times, foreign countries seem to really get and love Amanda Kruger and, and Number Five. You know, because I've seen a lot of homages to Amanda Kruger from other countries more so than from the U.S. But um, you know, they really you know, honor what that character means to the storyline, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a wonderful, um, I, although this one might've been an American guy, but somebody, um, on YouTube did a, I think they have a series of what, what is it? Not an homage. Well, maybe it is. What is that? Um, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like a fan fiction, isn't it? Right. Well, they, like they do a little video of, to the different characters kind of, you know, and the one they did for Amanda, I just thought was really beautiful. Um, and she actually is kind of, she does show up throughout, if you just saw five, I mean, she kind of shows up in mm -hmm. small little bits, but she kind of sh shows up throughout the, um, that episode through number five. Um, mm -hmm. There's a number of scenes. 
And okay. and I, yeah, you know, and I just love when people capture the spirit of who she is. And that that actually is what um, inspired the book was this, this picture by, um, oh, I'm so bad with names, Stephen P. Hughes. He's the artist. And if you can see her face, you know, here mm -hmm. she's, I had just yeah. found that randomly on, on. That's awesome. That yeah. is beautiful. Isn't it wonderful? And I found it on, um, you know, somewhere on, on the internet one time when I was just searching Amanda Kruger and the, what was captured and like, it's clearly a, I love it cause it's clearly me, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least to me, but also, <laughs> but just, just her expression is what I portrayed. It was what I felt, you know, and, and then just the way he did, you know, little baby Freddie and there's a little bit of red. Yeah. You, you can, can see that, right? Yeah. It's beautiful. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's so right. like, it's so like minimal, but it's like the, the pictures, like it's yeah. just, it's just so like, holy yeah. shit. Like right? this is, yeah. And this it, is it just, what I want you to say. Yeah. And it just, it captured for me the essence of Amanda, which, you know, I've been living with for 32 years. I mean, I, you know, granted, I haven't thought about her for 32 years every single day, but you know, as actors, you, or at least for me, anyway, I, a part of each character stays with me, you know, maybe not some of the little day play, you know, things on TV that I've done, but, but most of the films, there's a part of it because you create their backstory, you know, when you play a character. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of are there. And then, you know, after becoming a mother myself, it dawned on me even more of, of what this must have meant for her. And then as I've gotten more involved in, in Elm Street again and, and getting involved with the fans and stuff, it's just been, it was just haunting me. Like Amanda's story just kept coming to me and coming to me. And, and I just wanted her version told. And especially knowing that they might be doing a new, you know, there might be another Elm Street, which would be great if they do. Um, but I just wanted my version out there in the universe yeah. first. <laughs> sure. No, definitely. And, and the way I understand it, um, you you did a, a pretty in-depth dive into the movies themselves uh, in order to try to make sense of the timeline and, and draw inspiration from all of it, make sure that your story fit with it, which I think that's really cool because yeah. um, there's there's a lot of people out there making like fan films of other franchises and so forth where they do the same thing. They don't want to injure, you know, uh, the canon of the original films and they want to mm -hmm. make sure that their story fits within the timeline. Yeah. And I think that's really cool that, yeah. that you took that, that much and that's, effort to do that. Yeah. And that's, that's, I want to echo that too, because again, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these franchises now that, you know, we're, we're into this indie scene are getting these fan films, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but just one that people seem to not want to touch is Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. And I think it's, 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 a uh, it's a, it's just a testament to Robert, you know, how he portrayed Freddy Krueger. I mean, you, yeah. you can't match that. And again, no. the remake that came out, I know everybody has a problem with that. I know they do, yeah. but for what it was, what look what you're up against you're up against yeah. robert england no it's just almost like yeah. kane hotter is jason right you or doug bradley is pinhead it's almost a insurmountable person that you're going to try to portray right and if people can do it hey you know what that's an that, that's an admirable thing you did right you know but again robert england is freddy krueger i mean without a he shadow is. of a doubt there's just will never be another one uh, yeah i mean because he i mean for he speaks, you know, and he was in all, all, you know, he was in eight, you know, he has, he, when you're masked and, you know, even if you can really portray stuff with your body, which is, which is great, you know, it's easier, I think, to, for someone else to maybe pick up mm -hmm. the reins, but you can't, it, it is Robert and, and Freddy Krueger for, for most of the world is one and the same, you know, you just, you just can't, you can't mess with that, not while he's around. So, but, um, well, the interesting thing with that is now I'm actually the age that, uh, Nan Martin was when she played Amanda Kruger in three. 30. 30. Yeah. No. You're 30. No, I'm not. And I'm not, I don't know what it is. I, I, I'm not this, I'm 60, folks. I'm a 60 year old lady. I have no shame in that. I think it's. Okay. Well, time, time has not like touched you or it's anything. Not, it's because not it's been like, it's, it hasn't on caught you. up to you because it's like, damn, like oh. 40 oh. max. Yeah. 40 max. Oh. Oh, that's so sweet. Pisha, pisha. No, I think it's from doing yoga and from being part Asian. I my grandfather's Chinese, so um, it gives us really good skin. That I haven't grayed yet either, so you know. 
Wow. Although it probably is all going to come on. I keep wanting to get gray because nobody believes me that I'm 60 and I want to play like mm. little old ladies because that's about what I could play now, you know, little old ladies. But um, anyway, what we're saying. Oh, so what I was saying was, yeah, now, now I'm actually the age. So if they wanted to do, if anyone wanted to do a remake, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. so Amanda was, I mean, she was in, she was basically, you know, 60s when she died. Um, but she wasn't 60, obviously, when she gave birth to Freddie. She yeah. was a little older than I was. She, you know, was just, she, she technically should have been around 34. And I think I was 27 when we filmed it. But, you know, that's not too bad. I mean, that's no. neither here nor there. So it's a lot of people that try to, they cast people that are playing 12 year olds that are 20. It's like, whoa, guys. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Well, 21, not 21. Yeah. Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. We were all like, mm -hmm. you know, 20s that can play teenagers. So including i love that time too like that's money yeah well, the, just just that 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 time like when 21 jump street was out nightmare on elm street was out it had it just had a feeling to it like it had a different you know when you watch tv today like you you don't there's just a feeling that comes with watching like these nightmare on elm street movies and watching these old tv shows it's it's just nostalgic nostalgic just over. yeah for sure that whole time when you know before cell phones and you know, when we'd be running around till the lights went out and, you know, playing pinball machines and, you know, and disco and all that good stuff, you know, <laughs> seriously. It's yeah. Good stuff without a doubt. Yeah. No, I'm so grateful. I, I'm so grateful I was born when I was like, I, I'm, I feel bad for my sons, you know, I mean, there's other advantages, but not so much. <laughs> yeah. I caught the end of, I was, I was 83. So I caught kind of, you look good, good for times. 83, man. You look oh. really good. <laughs> well, thank you. But that's why you're wearing the glasses, right? <laughs> yeah, I, could, yeah. I mean, I take them off. I'm not. I usually try to keep them on, but that's it's because it's a mystique. Like ever since we've been doing this, I've had these. I've had my glasses on. They come off every once in a while. So, but yeah, I mean, Clint's only um, twenty seventy eight. So. so it's like um, he he's older than me. Yeah. You know? There you go. Well, Clint, do, do people tell you you look like um? People do tell you this, right? That you look like um. See, I'm 60, so I don't remember I, anything. You have to I've guess my name. I've been told so many different um, Who's Wolverine? people. Who's uh, Wolverine? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Are you yeah. told that a lot? Um, I was actually really Damn, complimented dude. one time. Uh, I have a part-time job as a bus driver um, at in Gettysburg. So uh, we, for some reason, we get a lot of Australians. And I heard a um, uh, husband and a wife remark to each other. I was just right. in earshot that they thought I looked like Hugh Jackman. I was like, oh, my God, I'll take that. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, no. Richard Dreyfus. I've got, I've got, I've gotten a Richard young Dreyfus George when Sperber. I saw him in um, um, Hunt Valley, Maryland, this past year. Thought that I looked like Jason Priestley from Nine Hundred Two One Zero, and I was like, ah, I don't know about that. Uh, but thank uh, you. If you got hit in the yeah, face right, with yeah. a two by four, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, uh, I got, I got, uh, I got George Thurgo when I when I used to work at GameStop, and that was before shave my head and everything like that because yeah. i was balding so i just yeah. went to town so did you say george now, thurgood yeah well you do drink alone so yeah. right. hey, you know what <laughs> oh boy <laughs> well, thank who's you clint, that, clint who's welcome. that behind you on the wall oh um <laughs> that's from a video game that i like to play so um, oh. in isolation uh i'm a big fan of uh the the alien movies um oh, okay. and there is a video game called alien isolation and that is one of the synthetics from the game oh. so um they call it a working joe and oh. i don't know somebody got me the poster i love it so i put it on the wall yeah. clint is a working joe <laughs> there we go a working joe yeah, well, I'm absolutely. a working Jane, I guess, or no, whatever. That's right. So, um, what kind of thoughts do you have for your book moving forward? I mean, uh, it'd be kind of cool, I think, if somebody were to try to adapt it into a film. Have you thought about doing that? Wouldn't that be awesome? It Wouldn't would be really, be awesome? really awesome. It would be very yeah. awesome. So, I'm I'm 100% open to that. Um, mm -hmm. Am I going to push that? I don't know. I okay. for me, the most the most important thing was just getting it out, and um, and mm -hmm. I my plan is to keep it limited. I did the 100 and then um, now there's 200. The second hundred say second edition. So at least the first edition, people say first edition. Okay. However, it has all the same stupid mistakes. <laughs> okay. I tell you, no matter I, I what, it. it's, it's so hard. I mean, I, you know, I read over this thing and read, reread, reread, reread. I sent it to editors twice, you know, and their whole job is supposed to find any mistakes and, you know, continuity errors and, but then I would be sending it to the printer and then I'd go, oh, well, because certain parts of it are in different files um, because there's illustrations. And so somehow 
old versions would get in like old pages and ugh, it's it's a pain but anyway mm, i watched the video and i was like that's see that's and yeah man, and whoever sees and a it, pregnant nun right yeah so, so cool. how many yeah. illustrations are in that book weren't you on the fence about turning there's it into over, a graphic novel yeah there's over 15 wow look at poor Freddy. that's that's a good Freddy one I like that. that's awesome Freddy being oh and look wait i gotta show you this one this one's so um it was a combination my my artist um so Stephen P. Hughes did most of them. Um, mm -hmm. And he, you know, he's the one that did the cover. But mm -hmm. then I also have um, Joe St. Pierre. Do you guys know him? He's, he works for um, DC Comics, Marvel. It sounds, fam sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. he, he, he uh, has the distinction of um, penning the most number one issues featuring Spider-Man and Spider-Man and the Spider-Man family. Um, he also did that um, Venom and he, he's, Ooh. he's a good artist. Yeah. And then, um, so he did a few of these, but here's a here's another sneak preview. Damn. There's Freddy. And That's really awesome. I man, I cannot wait to get this. And then this this is my probably one of my favorites. That is cool. That is awesome. So that's when Freddy's, Freddy's the moon. That's awesome. He, yeah. So he's being driven away as a little kid in the background, but there's the moon and look at the tree. Kind mm -hmm. of, you know, reminiscent that's of the wild. Love and, you know. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 I hope, I really hope people love it. it. It's, it's a, it's a, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Like I'm, I'm glad I didn't think so much about it before I did it because, <laughs> because, you know, I just, I was driven to write it. I wrote it. And then afterwards I'm like, wait a second, you know, fans are the ones that I did it for and fans are the ones that are going to buy it. But fans also are the ones that have carried this story with them for so long that, you know, there's always the risk that it's going to be like, I don't know, just contrary to what right. you guys have yeah. envisioned all this time. So it could be a little weird, yeah. you know, but yeah. I don't think so though, because, I, no. because I really, you know, and that, I think that's the reason I stuck to the films. Um, and I just fill in all the gaps that are already there. Like I'm not putting in anything right. particularly new um, other than just taking it further, you know, giving mm. the explanations, you know, behind things like the, you know, the Alice Cooper character, I gave a background to why he became that. Like, why the heck was he beating up on this kid, you know? And, uh, you know, why did Amanda become a nun? And, um, you know, and what what was Freddie's relationship to that wife, you know, short-lived as it was, you know, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. anyway, we'll see. We'll see what you guys think. <laughs> yeah. See, and that's yeah. the other thing that, that I would, that's why I would love to see a prequel to all this. Right. Because, I mean, it's, the the way that it's it's all laid out it could it's of course nothing's easy but the story's there i mean yeah. everything's there to to see and again everybody's seen you know almost every nightmare on elm street opens with some kind of variation of you know springwood slasher story he was right. burned this that and the other but we never got a prequel to anything other than that we never got to see anything you know that was that was cut and dry with you right with with freddie you know the kids that he that he he murdered yeah and it's just it's like the, it's all right there yeah i mean number six i is it in six yeah five so six right that's when um maggie burrows the daughter um yeah freddie's dead yeah where she has her you know she she um you know suddenly is having re visions of her past and and that's where she gets to see she walks in and she sees freddie kill kill his mom or, I mean, her mom in front of him. Um, you know, that's that's the where you get the most of his background story. I think. You know, you get a little bit in five um, where it's explained, or even three. You know, they, it, it's kind of flushed out a little yeah. bit here and there, and you start to find out what his background is. I mean, it could go even deeper than than what I did, but I'm I'm sort of laying the ground. Um, you know, and uh, you know, of course, I took a couple liberties just because, you know, to fill in the blanks. Yeah, filling gaps. Yeah. You know, so right. we'll. You know, we'll see. But, um, you know, and I didn't want to, you know, I think it still stays very true to who Freddie is. I mean, you you see, you know, they sh they do show enough that he was teased as a kid. We know he was teased as, you know, son mm -hmm. of a hundred maniacs. We know all that. We, you know, and, and we see him, you know, kill the mouse in the classroom and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, I just, part, I can't wait. Part to six does Part six doesn't exist to a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, well, a lot of people uh, hate five. People can be so cruel. You know, so funny with um, social media is, you know, people are always inviting me, like, you know, 
join our, our fan club, join this group, join, join that group. And then I'll go on. It. And then there are people trashing five. And I'm like, yeah, bash the shit out of it. I'm like, like I think I've seen that. I'm like, what are you all doing? Like, then don't, yeah, don't yeah. invite me. If you're going to bash it, yeah. you know, don't put, don't come on, me on here. There, so dude. we can show you how much of a piece how of much garbage we hate you think this stuff. is. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, God, stop. I mean, yeah. I go to conventions. I, I can get away from that. I'm joining a group. Yeah. It's like, geez, like, mm-hmm. that's why I wanted you to come to our group. Cause I'm like, people love, five people love it mm-hmm. and and it's you know honestly we've just gotten to the point where we've got a know, good mix we we've we got do. fans of just about everything yeah, you know? yeah. and and the the draw to i think the real draw to our group is like uh, lower budget films and uh-huh. and uh we we kind of take the line of underappreciated films um right. so like people aren't afraid to share the things that they they love on our on our group because they know at least somebody's going to care about it so right. um yeah. And fans can be really harsh. I mean, uh, yeah. we've, Man. we've learned that in a lot, you know, especially when it comes to something like a fan film, you know, or, right. or in your case, a backstory, you know, yeah. um, yeah. like, um, if it disagrees with their idea, you know, at all, I mean, the, yeah. they're just going to jump all over it and, and, and act yeah. like it's the worst thing they've ever seen. Yeah. So I, I gotta tell you, I am scared. Like I, I, <laughs> you know, I was saying it the other day, like I, I was scared about like, you know, which is why I said, I'm glad I didn't think too, too far about it. Yeah. You know, when I wrote it, because, you know, now that it's written, I'm sending it out, you know, people are all excited. And then I'm like, Oh shit. You know, what if they hate it? <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. I don't no. think so, but yeah, you never know. There might be some, but well, uh, what did you guys, what did you like about five? Honestly. I mean, it, it's just, it's a great, I mean, it's, again, it's, it, it just fleshes some stuff out and it's, uh, and, and Clint knows I'm big on continuity and the fact that yeah. you can have a lot of the same characters from four go into five. I, I like that. And granted, and if you haven't seen it up to this point, guys, sorry, spoiler alert, you know, a lot of them die, but it's the fact that it's, mm-hmm. it's continuity sake. You know, you have, mm-hmm. you know, you have Dan, you have uh, Alice, you have, it's just like, Five is relatively it's, not very bloody. I think there's only three real deaths yeah. in the whole movie, yeah. which makes it pretty tame compared to some of the other ones. Um, I think they were focusing on the story. Um, is that the one with the meatball and, kill? Uh, where he like fed her to death? Yeah, pizza? basically. Yeah. yeah, he feeds her. Well, he feeds. He feeds, well, he feeds yeah, until she explodes. Oh, no, the she, pizza one's a different he, movie. That's, that's pizza's not, okay. a different one. But but yeah. five, um, he feeds Greta her own belly that's which right. is which is right. the re- her scene was you know that erica played was the one reason i wouldn't let my boys watch them film i wouldn't let them watch Elm it reminded me of garbage pail kids oh, that's what it looked gross. like oh it's, it's, it's gross. so gross it's terrible you know and, and erica's amazing because she's like this gorgeous model i mean she's still stunning like really really good looking so is so is mm-hmm. lisa alice i don't know these people don't age there's something with elm street we you know mm-hmm. we don't age but anyway but but greta you know so she, so Erica, you know, I've done, I've done a lot of shows with her because she's also East Coast, you know, and she's this beautiful lady. And, you know, but she was even then, you know, it's like whatever, you know, she had to wear these grotesque masks, you know, where she's getting bigger and bigger, her cheeks, you know, puffing up with that gross food and everything. <laughs> yeah, like but, uh, yeah. a chipmunk and it was, preparing for winter. Exactly. You know, and yet when they, you know, and when, and they cut a lot of it out, like it was even grosser. In, in, mm. when they first filmed it I, that to, that is a really really gross scene <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. first the first death i mean actually this one has if anything they may have like toned down on the gore right. but it's still like a lot of the things that happen because that was the one where is it dan gets he sits on the bike and just all the yeah. stuff like the yeah. cables that's ridiculous so yeah. even if the gore's toned down special effects are amazing right yeah and and you guys talking about low budget and you know I mean it was it was a low budget film of you know they they put a lot into four, but they put way way less into five. Um, and then mm-hmm. plus just the speed of it. I mean it was just slam damn like just they dashed through that film. I've never ever been in a film that filmed so quickly and did post production so quickly. I mean they whipped that thing out. The film was out in the same year we filmed it. It was just crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. You know and and for that for the low budget and all. I think they did a great job. I mean, with those effects and stuff. I mean, they, you know, there's a few hokey things like (laughs) at the very end, (laughs) at the very end. So when we filmed it, um, you know, the script kept changing day after day, but um, they were originally at one point, supposedly saying that that was going to be the last, you know, because, because at the point Robert was like, I'm done, I'm done. I don't want to do anymore. Um, And so when I first read the script, Amanda, you know, takes him back in and then, you know, we go up to the stairs and I'm 
going to throw myself into the room of the hundred maniacs, um, you know, ostensibly to kill myself and Freddie will, you know, destroy us. Um, and that was supposed to be it. And I remember thinking, Ooh, I get to like, I'm the one that kills Freddie Krueger. Like that's, that would be like, you know, people would hate me, but also it'd be kind of cool, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, somewhere in the middle of filming, they're like, yeah, you know, maybe I don't know if Robert said, oh, maybe I, maybe I'll do more or they're just hoping he would do more. But they just said, you know, let's leave another opening. Not that they need to. They can find a way to make him come back, even if we did kill him. But which because mm -hmm. he dies in every single one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, but at the end of it, they decide to add the, you know, his hand coming out after I take him back in. Um, and we did film that. That actually was me. But at the very end, you know, when you watch it and the doors are closing, I, I had to like watch it a couple times because I'm like, whoa, wait, that's certainly not me. It's like some dummy. Like it's like a, at the end, it's like this dummy kind of going back and forth like this. They had like, I think it's a little puppet <laughs> at, at the very end as the doors are closing. Anyway, I, I had no idea until I saw the film that they used this little puppet. <laughs> a puppet yeah. Yeah. And that's what that's the thing about that movie. After watching like special features and behind the scenes, that movie changed, like you said, daily, like yeah. things. Yeah, would yeah. just cha change like a couple hours before you guys start shooting. Yeah, mm -hmm. we get the different pages. I have it somewhere. The script is somewhere in this house. I know it is, and it's it's rainbow colored. Like because every day, you know, d you'd get the different dailies. They'd be different colors: yellow, and then pink, and blue, and green, and you know whatever colors they had in there. It was yeah. crazy. So in the end, they really had a very hard time uh, tying it all together. You know, with with an edit to where it would make any sense. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and the whole thing does kind of feel a little bit like a fever dream. I mean, there's uh there it's all over the place. I mean, um, yeah. uh, every, every scene is different. Things change multiple times. I mean, like uh, we were talking about uh, Dan uh, there for a minute, you know, he's, he's in the truck, you, you know, it crashes. He rolls out in the pool again. Then he hops onto a motorcycle. Then he becomes some weird, you know, motorcycle thing. Right. And, uh, and yeah. uh, ultimately ends up back in the truck again. So I'm like, I, I don't even know what's How going that... on right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. It. Uh, so, it's but at the same Clint, time, it was kind of cool, you know. Um, and you asked what we what we liked about these movies, and it's like, uh, uh, or this particular one, you know. You. Um, you like you. I liked. I liked a lot of the scenery. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, I did find it interesting that every time somebody was ready to drop in, into a pit, it looked very like, uh, like. Uh, pink and cavernous and moist almost like it was supposed to be like uh <laughs> like a birth said? canal type thing you know I'm like right? uh, I, i'm like we've got a theme going here like uh the birth thing is throughout the entire movie and right and um, yeah i i expected to see fire and so forth when when those came up i didn't see any of that right but, but i really did enjoy your character and and i think the 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 mother aspect did come across yeah. you know because um you know you would show up and and like you would feel like a, a little bit of kindness at, at one point directed towards, you know, the character who is obviously, you know, uh, non-threatening. And then uh, there would be, you know, a stern motherly, you know, like uh, point of the finger and like the indication that you were the only one who could stop him. Like, uh, like, well, a parent always keeps a child in line, you know. Right. So it's like yeah. it really I felt that character. It, it came through a little bit um, in the end. So cool. yeah. I enjoyed that. Good. Oh, I'm glad you did. <laughs> And yeah, you're right. The sets, I mean, the sets were really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I, you know, just walking around them, they were cool. Really the lighting, the mood. I, I thought it was amazing. Yeah. It's underrated. I mean, it's, it's underrated for what it is for, for, for a Nightmare on Elm Street movie to be underrated is it, it almost seems like it's just, it's, it's blasphemy to say that because it's Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. But out of them all. Right. Maybe with the mm -hmm. exception of Freddy's Dead, because again, just mm -hmm. I hate that movie. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow, despite all that, you made the decision not to do another horror movie. Uh, what was that all about? <laughs> oh, stupid youth! I don't know. You know, <laughs> theater school. What the hell? You know, I'm like, oh. you know, and it, it was the exact same choice. The 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 part of me that decided not to do more horror films was the same part of me that didn't want to wear something really sexy in um, quarantine my director wanted me to be like in this really hot outfit. And that was the one month in my life. I probably could have pulled it off. No, you know, I was, you know, back in the day, I, I could have worn something sexy and not <laughs> gross people out. But, you know, um, I was all method actor, you know, and, and, 
you know, this is this dystopian future and why on earth, she, you know, she's trying to save her father. She's not going to be running around in a sexy little outfit. You know, she's going to grab what she can. And I insist on wearing like men's clothing. Oh, it's just dumb. You know, my, my husband now, you know, he, he's, um, you know, he didn't know me when I was an actor, but he's, you know, when he thinks back on that, he's like, you're so stupid. Like, why on earth didn't you do it? You know, you could have been whatever, but <laughs> nah, nah, uh, it, it, that, that makes sense. It makes sense. Cause we've heard, We've heard a couple of people of our interviews say that, like they didn't, I don't want to say like degrade themselves, but they just had more, yeah. just more class. It was like, well, why can't I just play the character that was, yeah. you know, right. But my it, way. It didn't go that well though. I think, I mean, it, it was an okay film. Um, but you know, maybe I, you know, I mean, I think back on it and, and she, um, in quarantine, did either of you see it? Be honest. I haven't been no, able I to didn't. find it. Not yet. No. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people haven't seen it. But um, so my character. So yeah, let's see. Okay. There. That's there me go. up there. Yep. And I I don't know if you can see from there. But anyway, so I have this side, I'm holding the gun and I got this side braid. And it's really this cool design. And 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 the clothes I wear and everything, I swear to God, it's what Katniss um in, in Hunger Games. Hunger Games. It's that look. And this was well before her. So maybe somebody on that film saw this because i'm telling you like it's 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 that look um there's a fun kind of look to to quarantine if you if you and quarantine i think it is on youtube normally i would never tell people to you know just you know go take these YouTube. films yeah steal steal yeah. films and not pay for them but quarantine yeah. and matinee go ahead because the mm -hmm. actors certainly aren't losing anything with you guys watching them <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, so not a penny a not one penny I, i'm the lead in the dang thing I don't know mm, what crazy. it was, but it was because right. it was Canadian. Um, oh, not because yeah, it was, they... it, the, <laughs> See, no, 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 I didn't, Canadian. You're done. no, You're done no, 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 <laughs> because it was the Canadian union, um, it, at least with these independent films. And at least back then, I guess, just didn't have the same kind of strength that yep. SAG has, you know, to protect yep. us. So it is what it is. But um, yeah, so look for it. Look for quarantine matinee. Maybe I'll upload it somewhere on the internet because the the, the only version I've seen up there is horrible. Yeah, it's, it's some awful. weird. It's terrible. Yeah. I tried so hard. I was like, I'm gonna get on here and tell her that this rip is terrible. Yeah, no, and it she, is. And then you're like, you said the same thing. I'm like, finally. Yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah, no, thank it looks you. horrible. It's unwatchable. Um, you you can get it like on for sure on eBay and stuff like that. But I will definitely do it. But you know, they're they've been um released. I remember I was traveling in Japan one time, and I saw. Was it quarantine? It was either quarantine or or, or matinee. And in and anyways, in Japanese it was called blood zone. <laughs> blood zone. You know, and 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 I've seen this, I've seen these films like in different countries under different names. So, you know, I'm not, I'm sure nobody's getting rich off of them for sure, but somebody's getting some kind of money. I'm not even right. touching that one. Clint knows where I'm going with that one. I've mm. we had <laughs> we had an episode where we talked about Italian zombie flicks. And actually, just Italian movies in general, they when they get localized, you can't you can't find them because you don't know what the hell they're called. Mm, you know, they right. come over here and it's like they're another name in Germany, they're another name in the UK. It's like I just want to watch the damn movie. Right. I really, I really just want to watch the movie, and you can't find it. You can't find it, but I think I think that's how they get away to some degree, right? With a probably so. Well, you guys, you know, maybe want you know next year or whatever. Watch watch my films and have me back on about next those year. Ones. Or whenever. It's only July. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Damn, Maybe. September. No, I'm kidding. No, but you have to yeah. watch them though. This is yeah. true. We can, uh, we can uh, talk about them, but they're 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 right up your alley if it's low budget films because they were very yeah, very low budget. That's that's we'll we'll do. We'll and do you'll a be Beatrice surprised. Episode. You'll find a lot of actors you know in both of them. You're mm -hmm. gonna recognize. Yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah. Just, like I said, I'm not. I'm not opposed to watching either one. Honestly, I mean. Yeah. yeah. No, I put a star next to quarantine. Do. I'm definitely gonna look for that one. Yeah, I want to out of out of them. But make sure you look one. at the. But make sure you look for the 1989 as opposed to because there's a you know quarantine. There was one oh, that yeah. came out in the 80s or something. And yeah. then yeah. and then matinee. It's it's interesting because it, it it takes place during a horror film festival and and um some of the a lot of the actors in that like the guy who plays my father is the smoking man from um you know David David uh oh god I'm terrible with names um you guys come on what's the what's Clint Scully and, no what's the Scully and Mulder Oh, oh, the X Files. David X Files. David so the Duchovny. Smoking Man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he plays my dad in this one. That's um, awesome. And then actually, my boss in in matinee is played by now he's deceased, but Don, uh, he was also in in that same movie you just said. 
I mean, TV show. You're talking okay. to Christina, huh? lady. X-Files. X-Files, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So in X-Files, the major, he was the um, Don. Wow. Yeah, he, he, he's in it. Um, there's a lot of people in it. Canadian films are filled, filled, filled with all kinds of actors you know. So yeah, uh, and, uh, faces uh, you recognize, you know, because we and, do. And the, th- the thing with that too is that don't um, and just correct me if I'm wrong, but some of these people, they they um, uh, they have aliases, so they don't, so SAG doesn't get them. Like they want to be in these movies, but if they if people find out from SAG that they're in them, what what I mean seriously. So we've heard this. What happens to people? Do you get ding? Do you? What happens? Your creditation's gone. Well, no. I mean, at least we'll. All I can say is for the films that are filmed in Canada with like all those actors that we were talking about, they mm-hmm. were Canadian. I mean, they're American. I'm American. I was born in the U S but um, I was born in the U S I can run for president. Anyway. Um, I vote. <laughs> no, anyway. Um, now you got me off topic. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, no, they, they usually what would happen is they would work under the Canadian contract under actor. Okay. So they don't get in trouble with SAG. SAG doesn't, and it's easier for SAG because they don't have to take care of any of their residuals or anything. Um, yeah. But in Vancouver, it would be interesting because there are all these great actors, but for the, all the lead roles, they would come from the, from the States. They would bring in, even though we had lots of great, great actors in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a, a dear friend of mine who always just got like these, you know, tiny little, you know, she'd get to play the waitress or the this or that on the sideline. Her name's Karen Carnival. And she, um, she ended up, she's fantastic. Did you guys um, see the Planet of the Apes? The more recent ones, the mm-hmm. three with, yeah. So she's, she's Maurice, the orangutan. Okay. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I have her um, motion capture photos here of before and after. So she's this tiny woman and she studied the heck out of orangutans and um, she'd go to the zoo and really got to know them. And, you know, and then, then they had um, that famous guy that teaches everyone how to move like a monkey. Um, you know, and she studied with him and she, she got to, yeah, she played Maurice and That's it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It is. You know, and, and, and uh, she was just telling me the other day how she didn't get invited the first, the first premiere, they didn't even invite her. And so she had to, it's, you know, and, and yeah. And Maurice is like a big character. Yeah. I mean, well, not, he's right. also big, yeah, I mean, he's big physically, but you know, he's, he plays a, you know, it's a big yeah. role in the, in the film. Um, but because she was like the Canadian actor, they didn't, even invite her but after that after the first film so she invited herself and bought a ticket and went but she after that they realized how much the fans loved her and how integral the character was yeah no doubt yeah that's yeah. that's definitely a big part yeah andy circus is and yeah r- ridiculous and in, right in, in yeah. those movies i mean yeah yeah that's, def- that's that maurice is definitely a, a big part so yeah that's really kind of weird i wanted to i actually wanted to audition for it I, I i actually made my husband make me these out of um uh canes I, you know and, and little things so i could walk do the the, what is it called? Oh, the not not biped moped whatever that quad, kind of walk yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. thank you you know and i'd be like running around my street like walking like goo, 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 making these crazy noises but um <laughs> something i can't remember with my schedule but i never ended up auditioning but planet of the apes was my favorite mm. i loved planet of the apes when i was growing up planet of the apes is amazing yeah. yeah absolutely incredible yeah That'd be another situation do- where I say, find the footage. Yes, find right? the footage. Yeah. yeah you're running up and down. The you street. walking around as an ape on yeah. the street. I yeah. want to see little, that. You have a little, GoPro. Little, I want to see that like POV, like GoPro <laughs> down the street. That'd be oh amazing. boy. Yeah. So did you did you have to audition for Amanda Kruger or did, was it was it just they knew who who you who was getting that part? Well, it, they didn't, but I when I got I mean it was it, it was almost like that because I had just come from Canada um, and I had just started in those two, um, you know, and I was sort of like the, it, I was, you know, it was my 15 seconds of fame, but it was, it was about exactly, I think 15, maybe it was 16 seconds, but anyway, seriously, like for the short little bit, um, I was kind of the it girl and I'd done a lot of stuff and, you know, at least in Vancouver in the film industry, you know, they, if you'd said my name, you know, all the actors would be like, oh, if she's coming, then we shouldn't even bother. Like, they just assumed I would get the part, you know, and it, you know, right at the height. And I had the whole red carpet at the um, Vancouver film festival. And that was the same film festival that um, 
uh, Mystic Pizza just opened. And I remember we we're all mm. watching this beautiful girl with long limbs going, God, she's going to go someplace, you know, uh, you know, of course, Julia Roberts and, right. and whatnot. But um, yeah, no, I was at the height of my career. So um, my at the current at the time, boyfriend couldn't hack it. So he left and moved to L.A. because um, mm. he was an actor himself. And then, of course, being a young girl without a lot of great self-esteem yet I had, I followed him down. <laughs> so anyway, so that brought me to LA and it, it really kind of cursed my career in Vancouver because all the casting directors and producers are like, Hey dude, you know, we built you up and you're this, yep. now you're the it girl and you, you can get all the roles, um, you know, and you leave, you, you know, and the idea, the, the feeling that they get is you think you're too big for Vancouver, yep. Yep. which had nothing to do with it. It was not at all that I thought I was too big. Absolutely. I was following my stupid, boyfriend you know and right um and of course to come down to la and they don't know who i am i'm you know a nobody down there but um i think because of my relationship with emilio estevez you know having been in bed with him and all um yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. he introduced me to his dad's um uh agent and she really just represented martin sheen charlie sheen and renee estevez like she was more of a manager but she took me on um because um, we invited her to the premiere of Quarantine. So she took me on. And then the first role she sent me up to audition for was Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, and I remember thinking, eh, you know, I'm not really into horror. But she goes, no, no, no. I want you to meet the, the director. He's, you know, up and coming. He's from Australia. Just go do the audition, meet him. And um, and I, I went to the audition. And it was the one and only time that I got cast right there in, in that room. Like, I, they just gave it to me. And that never happens. Never you know, but it did. I, maybe because they're in such a rush, you know, I mean, like, we got to get somebody. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She'll do. <laughs> We're going to throw a nun's habit on her. She'll be okay. But either way, uh, however, they came to that decision. That's the rest is history or her story. <laughs> mm -hmm. Best decision mm -hmm. I could have made. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I'm so grateful. And my, my gratitude and, and appreciation for what how iconic it is, you know, and, and what it means, you know, just grows by the every year. I think all the cast members are this in the same boat. Like none of us had a clue at the time how iconic Freddy Krueger and and that franchise is. Like we, no, you know, we all. Yeah, I think you're right on that too. Yeah, I mean, we knew who Freddy Krueger was. It wasn't like some of the other things I auditioned for. You know, like you know, sexy boob girls on bicycles getting raped by Satan or something like that. Damn, you Actually, had me you know, at the sexy girls on on bikes, but then after that, I'm like, Jesus, like, like wow. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, if if I had been given, like, really fun, creepy scripts, like, spooky stuff that I grew up with in the 70s and 80s on yeah. TV, you know, like the Trilogy of Terror and stuff like that, I totally would have gone for it. But a lot of them were, you know, just, like, it total, just gratuitous, and the scripts weren't good, and, um, right. you know, and you know, yeah, I could, again, you know, I was in my twenties, so I could have pulled off that whole, you yeah. know, sexy girls on whatever, but it just, it wasn't what I wanted to do, you know? Yeah. I didn't. But so I, the, we've, heard that. we've heard that a couple of times from a couple yeah. of people. Um, <laughs> yeah. Clint, go ahead. But I, no, I was a lot richer now if I did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, right? yeah. I mean, even, even a, a B career, you know, I mean, um, taking all those roles, you know, could have, could have oh, for sure. propelled you to, don't to pay somewhere. Much. I've, and, I've done, I've done the sexy dude with boobs on bikes. Yeah. Don't pay much. Yeah, 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 those boobs yeah. on bikes. You know, don't well. pay much. Yeah. I only got, a, I only got $15 and that was, the, that was, they just sent me in the back. They actually gave me $25 you... to get off the bike. <laughs> Don, it's because you didn't shave your legs. Well, I yeah, heard well, about that. You didn't shake your legs. I wasn't doing that. They, oh. they, they couldn't pay me enough to do that. No, oh, you know, Too the, the sexy boobs. They wanted the, the shaven legs, but anyhow, mm -hmm. I can handle mm -hmm. sports bra. I couldn't do the shave legs. Not doing that. Mm -hmm. Quarantine. Right. Speaking of which, uh, here's an incentive for you guys to watch it. There's a scene where you see my boobs back thirty, <laughs> whatever it was, thirty years ago when they stood up on their own, really nice. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's so funny. I think maybe that's why my boys won't watch it. Uh, I, you know, it, it was the weirdest thing I found. There was a movie once. Um, you guys might know what it was. Um, and it was these guys that their whole um, career was going through movies and, and stop stopping on any time there's like boobs or nudity. Does that ring a bell? Anyway, they made a movie about it. And I didn't. I, that's the only thing I remember about it. And I remember thinking, what a ridiculous thing. But it turns out to be true because 
I was Googling myself, you know, how you just Google yourself every once in a while. <laughs> and if I go down like the fifth or sixth page, it starts to get weirder and weirder. And then there was one thing that was like rating B Bupley's boobs. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Triple B. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 and then I had to pay to see what they were going to say. So I refused. But anyway, what the hell? I know you have to. Yeah, they but there's these sites where they go and I guess they just go through every film that has a, any kind of rating and they just freeze frame on every naked shot, male or Holy female. Holy shit, Clint, we got to find this. Yeah, there is a they, but you got to pay. How much is it? I have no idea. But I don't know. Fuck that anyway, man. you can just so, you can just watch quarantine. I just watch quarantine. And be like, yeah, yeah. Hey, I yeah. Go. I go. do your own Those rating, Don. Do your yeah. own rating. Yeah, I remember reading, and there was this review. Some guy says, "Well, with a name like B. Bubbly, Bubbly, then you know something like bodacious boob." Like it's oh shit, anyway. that's what I put. <laughs> Damn it, that's what I put for that was our yours. <laughs> yeah, you I, put boda- I didn't even realize that. I was like, "Oh, yeah. bodacious be- Oh shit!" He posted that-, that the live event was coming up in the group. I do recall seeing the word bodacious. It was bodacious. Oh my, bodacious <laughs> boobs. A- oh wow, son of a bitch. That's so, my I don't think boobs is in that's there. That's on me. Ah. I think I, well, I had bombastic at first. That sounded a lot better, and I was like, "There yeah, you go." Audacious. I was like, "Yeah." Uh, so maybe that's I have to was. ask just just because I'm curious. What you is your favorite point. horror movie? My favorite horror movie ever. Ever. You know, actually, I've been asked by this guy who does this book, um, "Celebrities 10, 10 List." I'm supposed oh, to come mind. up I don't with want my. Co- I don't want to copy anybody. I'm supposed to give my 10, 10 top horror things. Um, okay, what's the what's the what's the what's the I'm, worst like, horror still, movie? Oh. What's the one you hate the most? There, I'll go that way. Oh, that's cruel. I'm not going to say that one, no, but okay. I would say, but in terms of what I like the most, um, I mean, things that scared me the most were, you know, definitely when I was a kid. So, you know, Amityville Horror and um, oh, and shocker. Exorcist and all that kind of stuff. You know, when I was a kid, and that's when I, you know, watched them and. But I, I gotta say, like the ones that I love, I'm loving Korean films. I'm just loving. They know how to do it. They do. They know how to do it. They develop characters. I think it's because of the character Mm -hmm. development. You know, like you, you know, like you saw with Squid Games. Like, you know, in Squid Games, you know, even if you're not into gore and stuff in that first, you know, episode one, like how many people die, you Mm -hmm. know, get shot down, but the characters just draw you in and the storyline and then you know that's the kind of film that's the kind of horror film i would play anything and if it had good characters you know and um but anyway so yeah no i love have that you the, I, have you seen the sadness it's no. on shutter watch oh boy watch that one it's, the sadness uh, it's called sadness it's okay. uh yeah. i hear it's a tough it is, watch it is absolutely brutal oh really but um yeah it's it's one of the okay. best movies, and I'm not. I'm not just saying it because I'm, you know, a masochist or anything. But okay. it's one of the best movies I've I've seen in a long time. Uh, uh, I've been avoiding it because I hear they have some some it's pretty gross scenes the, with children. Do- and toward- oh. yeah. really? I thought uh-huh. there was. I, no. I heard from somebody no. else. No, like, there's no uh, no, no cannibalism no. stuff. No. Okay. No. 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 Where the hell right. did they get that from? Uh, no, there's nothing like that in there. Hearsay, there's, brother. There, I didn't watch it. There's a couple. <laughs> there's a there's a scene towards the end that gets a little, little crazy. But it's it no nothing. I don't remember anything with kids. Okay. Because even I would have been like, okay, I'm gonna turn this off. What was. about snakes? Are there you snakes, like snakes in it? You don't like I'm, snakes? I'm getting better. I I it's a phobia. It's it's, no, it's different no than fear. No, okay. there's no snakes. In. Damn. Yeah, snakes you know, are kind of freaky. Well, you know, phobias are different than fear because like there's no logic to it. Like I don't, you know, with snakes. I know, you know, when I see a snake in the garden, I know it's not going to hurt me. I I don't wish it any harm. I just get freaked just don't out. I want to see it. It just freaks me out. I, I love wanna... that. Me and Clint even said that before we came on. Our... We were right, Clint. She is very freaking smart. She's she even said it right there. A phobia is different than fear, and she's oh, totally yeah. totally right. That's awesome. Well, I went to university. <laughs> no, in my family though, I'm 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 the dunce of the family because. Seriously, I mean, every every family member on my side are all PhD, and here I'm. It's overrated, though. I, know, I don't want right? to go. I don't want to go get their autograph. I want to come get yours. Well, you know what's so funny? So th- this this um, ooh, hold on one second. You guys talk amongst yourself. Yeah, go sweet. Well, she's having fun. Yeah. You all right? So 
No, I'm fine. Speaking of Korean films, um, they even do action films really well. If you saw like uh, The Man uh, from Nowhere, yeah. that was awesome. <laughs> yes. So the same week, so um, this is a book my mom put out. Um, what? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, Ch- it's Chinese history. I'm, I told you I'm part Chinese. So anyway, yes. this is, and she's like mega famous in China um, because she's the first um, first person ever to really discover um she she's created this whole metho- methodology where you can find um, ancient Chinese paintings. And w- in China, when you're talking ancient, you're talking three thousand years old versus four thousand years yeah. old. You know, and um, she discovered, like in the in the palace museum and stuff, these paintings that they had by C.C. C. Wang or you know something like that that were attributed to an artist, say you know two thousand years ago. She's like, well, no, it's actually a wonderful artist, but it's an artist from a thousand years ago, pretending to be the artist from 2000 years ago. And anyway, she created this whole myth- methodology of how to look at the brush strokes and the feeling and all that stuff. And people kept her out of um, museums. She was banned from all kinds of museums um, around the world. And, you know, oh. nobody yeah, believed her. She was calling stuff out. She didn't that's want to, right. she didn't that's want, the, or they right. didn't want her to discredit the artifacts discredit that uh-huh. exactly yeah, uh, but, and I got you. but only suddenly and very recently she says she's 88 and um she's living in nepal <laughs> following All her right. guru yeah she's become a monk but anyway she um anyway so finally the chinese government's like wait a second holy shit she's right um and now they are hiring her to teach her me- methodology and her book is like a huge seller and she's just, she she gets book tours all the time she's signing autographs and all this stuff so she has this one and then my little brother who lives in um bali i uh, know that's my dad my stepdad lives in bali my brother lives in singapore he's teaching at the university of singapore and he he has a book that just came out literally last week and then i have my <laughs> <laughs> my little book. What is and, happening? You know, and they, my, my, to my family, like, I, I'm going to tell you, none of them will read it. I, I just know my family. I'm, I'm like the little. Oh, she's, the, she's a good cook. She's a sweet little girl. Like I'm just. Oh. The, you know, like, oh, but, that's huge. But you, but you know no what? See, <laughs> that's what. See, oh, you know, as cool as that is, with mom writing a book, everything else. I like food. I like horror movies. There you go. Sorry, guys. Your PhDs don't right? go so far. With They're me. not doing a lot for me. <laughs> I know. A lot for me. I'm like, if I and if I do get your autograph, I'm, it's going to be a, for for a prescription of Vicodin. So I can't. <laughs> you know, like that. So we're done. It's we're, I, the stuff that B's going to sign is going on my wall. See, the stuff y'all going to sign is going to CVS. <laughs> so there you yeah, go. I, I, I am definitely more interested in in, in getting your autograph and getting. You know, watching your movies. Yeah. So, so thank um, you. do you, yeah, absolutely. Do you still can do you still consider yourself to be retired from acting, or do you think you'd go back to it at any point? No, I actually am going to be going back to it. So, um, okay. Now that now that I'm an empty nester, my boys. Um, so my older son just finished college, and my younger son just started college, um, and so I yeah, we're empty nesters. I have I have lots of time on my hand, and and I'm actually cast in. And in fact, he just texted me. I wonder what he was going to say, but um, there's a there's a movie um, that's supposed to start filming next year called. Um, oh, my God, this is what's so hard being old. <laughs> Emerald Forest. Ooh. Yeah. And and it's cat. And, and I'm telling you, you know, who's the cast is. Um, <laughs> there I go. Uh, Lisa Wilcox. Right. From, okay. from Elm Street. Awesome. And wow. Danny is oh. cast in it. Mark. Um, Mark Mark Patton from Number Two. I Elm Street love 2. Mark Patton. Yeah, he's in it. So he's playing like this little wizard. Um, Danny's playing some sort of warrior. It's it's a it's a fantasy sort of. It's a we wizard met, of Oz. We met thing. Danny at a uh, at Carolina Fear Fest. Oh, that Danny, fun. Danny and Mark. They were both else. there. Yeah, yeah, Danny and Mark were there. I got a right. I, gotta, I have to send you. I send you the pic I got with Mark. It was funny because he was walking by, and and I was I was uh, we were talking to uh, Felissa Rose and and she's going to be in it too. Felissa's oh. in it too. Yeah. Well, count me in. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. We were walking. Yeah, there, he was walking by with us. uh yeah with uh with Peter with his his agent. Yeah, Peter. He's on yeah. our agent. Yeah. Yep. And um, I was like, hey, you know, can I can I pay for a picture and an autograph? He's like, uh, I'm done. 
So he was like, so he's like, come on. So you got a picture. I got a picture with him. And I was, and I kissed his head and we took the selfie and it was one of the best pictures. I think I got oh. of the whole career. He didn't even care. He was like, yeah, I'm not working anymore. So he's like, come on, let's get this picture. Oh, that's sweet. I love Mark. I yeah. Love Mark. No, Mark. I, I, I love talking to Peter too. Peter is a, that dude is, is something else, man. He is fun. Yeah, he is fun. He's, 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 yeah, he's going through stuff right now. He's having a, Ah, poor Peter. But anyway, yeah, he's great. Peter's he is. Peter's awesome. Yeah, he he represents most of us from uh, certainly almost everybody from five. Yeah. Um, plus Mark and Kim and and a bunch, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, he'll be he, he's probably coming too. So Gettysburg, I, it'll be myself and Mark and I think John Dugan's going to be there. Who yeah, else? I think John Dugan's going to be. I don't think Danny's oh. going to be there. Do I think Danny's going to be there? I don't, I don't think, think so. Danny's going to be at that one. Um. And then Florida, I'm doing um, Phantasm. Um, you guys know John Henderson and 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 uh, Doomsday Crypt. Are you familiar yes, with? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. He's so they're doing a whole thing for me. Like they're the ones that are bringing me down, and um, they've got because they they're you know connected to so many different artists. And there's one guy who does um, who does the um, the hockey masks, and he did mm -hmm. this beautiful hockey mask. It was sort of like a crossover for Elm Street with. Um, it has Freddy's claw claw mark, and then it has a rosary for Amanda Kruger. He, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna. He made that for me. And he's gonna give that to me. And then there's a guy that does um, animatronic um, things, and he's got this animatronic Freddy. And um, he's made. He asked for my photo, and he's with his 3D printer. He's gonna make a animatronic Amanda. <laughs> and um there's just like Sheesh. all kinds of, yeah and there's like a ton of amanda stuff that people are making down there so it's going to be this whole mm. amanda kruger fest so i'm i'm very excited for that Clint, we can drive 13 hours i'll drive half you drive half yeah come on down it's going to be fun <laughs> i think we're going to have a good time when uh, is that one that's uh august august phantasm it's when i get back from, you guys when i come back from spain oh, oh. well yeah you i know we're gonna say we're gonna definitely gonna see in gettysburg there's no there's very yeah there's yeah i'd say it's a 95 there, there's chance. nothing that's going to keep me from that one uh, good yeah, i mean i'm excited about a couple of things going on there you know and it's cool. just cool yeah. that you're going to be there so I'll thank it's you in person a, for being on the show bonus you are an absolute <laughs> bonus oh fun 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 uh but, we're an yeah. hour and 12 minutes guys live oh, and this Bye. is what you sorry we keep going I we're know. It's, well, that's the thing. I talk. I talk. I just. Blah, 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 we blah. love that. We're. It's at least we got at least another two hours before I got to actually like start paying you. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Into some food. No, no you're fine. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Um, no, we uh, we don't want to take up too much of your time. We, I mean, man, we. Just, it, it's just been so great talking to you. Like you were definitely everything that I thought you were going to be. After talking to you for so long, you've definitely exceeded expectations you're just a great person oh. that's the best part about it you know you you just your interactions are just great i mean what you know seeing you on instagram facebook with the fans you care what you do and and you love yeah. what you do and and it's it's it, it's just great and and the fact that we get to talk to you guys meet you guys it's just it, it's an added bonus to us because you know we're still new to this game and the fact that we've talked to yeah. A lot of people it, it means the world does awesome so yeah, yeah well, anybody not you. following yeah anybody not following you on instagram should follow you on instagram there's a lot of really cool pictures on there so it, it's beatrice underscore um bupley underscore elm street so yeah. uh, i started following just like yesterday so oh and you gotta it's, if you're following you gotta look at some of the old stuff that's yeah yeah that's what Donna, i mean it's did super you, cool did to you look see at any that. of those silly yeah because i did all, i did these silly um Actually, I think Mark Patton was the one that was like, you know, dude, you got to stop because I was doing too many of these um, mashup of Freddie and, you know, with these weird little voices and stuff. I did baby Freddie singing and me singing and it's, stuff. It's amazing. That, that I, is. I have fun Clint, with Clint, if it. you haven't watched that, that is freaky and awesome at the same time. <laughs> I'll go it's, find it. It's I, nuts. I love the one of little like, little baby Freddie singing, you know, my butt cheeks. Anyway, um, <laughs> but they got. It's awesome. They're just funny things. And then I. I don't know if it's still on there, but I did, I did a duet with me, you know, Amanda Kruger and Freddie doing the, you know, um, ah, man, yeah, man, yes, man, that's man. still there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> from, do Lion you know, King. a friend of mine, um, actually it was my son's boy scout leader. Um, he, uh, he works for Disney, um, Disney, Broadway, Broadway, Disney. Um, and he told me the funniest story that the actress who plays, I guess it's it's the the monkey at the beginning. 
Well, who's oh, that monkey? Um, you know that the with the rattle and everything. The 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 voodoo oh, doll, geez. not the voodoo. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. But you guys know what I mean, like yeah, the the, 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 yeah. the Rafiki. Rafiki, thank you. So the actress yeah. that plays Rafiki, she's um from. Uh, I'm trying to think which African country. Maybe was it was it Sudan? Was she speaking Sudanese? Anyway, she's speaking you know some uh, an African language, um, and uh, and she's and well that song. So it was the, anyway. So whatever language it is that she's singing, and you know she's singing, mm-hmm. ah, and we all think, oh, we all there's a part where she's talking to the audience and she's going on and on, and you know, and, and we all think it's like this mighty song about the jungle or or the the lions or something like that. <laughs> and one day, one of the kings from that country came. I, I wish I could remember what the heck country it was, but anyway, one of the kings was in the audience, and afterwards, um, you know, my friend. Didn't, Mr. Amendola, he, he, you know, says hello and takes them backstage and stuff. And as he's walking him backstage, the king or prince or whatever said to, to my friend, he says, you know, why is she, why do you put her in such a costume? And he says, what are you talking about? And apparently the whole time she's singing, she's going, you know, in the, if you translate it, she's going, oh, this goddamn thing. It's so itchy. I ha- can't stand it. It's really itchy. The material sucks. The material sucks. You know, and, and you know, but us Americans are thinking, you know, she's like, oh, and we have no clue what she's actually saying. I thought it was so funny when when they told us. That. It's funny. It's so funny you mention that because I'm looking at the kanji that's on the back of your wall. Yeah. And what's funny about that is if you don't get that stuff translated right, a lot of people put that get tattoos of that. Oh, I know. You have got to be careful with that. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I you know, I speak I speak Japanese um because we lived in Japan for 4 years when I was a kid and Japanese actually was my first written language. And it's so funny the the amount of times, you know, people have stuff written on them and you're like it's upside down or yep. it's like, "Oh my gosh." Um in speaking of Japanese, actually it's on um it, it's on one of the James Bond films. Is it Goldfinger? Is there a boat scene in Gold, Goldfinger? Or there, there's one in anyway, some, one of the old James yes. Bond movies, there was a scene where like the bad guys and they're supposed to be Asian. Um, I think they even maybe were supposed to be Japanese, you know, I mean, in, in Hollywood, it's all interchangeable. You can, whatever yeah, Asian right. is Asian, right. They just yep, put yep. them all together. And so it was these guys and they're getting ready to go off on this boat to who knows what to explode something or whatever. And they're all saying something in Japanese and they're talking back and forth, back and forth. And my whole family speaks Japanese and we're sitting there watching <laughs> And they're like, Tsurinikoka, hi, so Tsurinikone, Tsurinikoka. And they're just saying it over and over. And what they're saying is, you want to go fishing? Yeah, let's go fishing. You want to go fishing? Yeah, let's go fishing. And we're like, oh my yeah. God. You know, yep. It's, like... yep. it's terrible. And me and my wife, we watch a lot of, uh, we watch a lot of anime uh-huh. um, just because we, we just, we grew up on it. And it's, we watch the subtitles and, you know, hearing just, uh, and there's, there's words that you hear, you know, yeah. arigato, you hear that. And when they say it and they, it's like, guys, look, arigato, you got the subtitle wrong. Right. It's like, what the hell? It's like one of the most known Japanese words out right. there. Right. For everyone knows from the song. Domo arigato, yeah. Mr. <laughs> it's like, and you get the subtitle wrong. Something. They do. The subtitles are awful. I, I, I substitute teach Japanese at the local middle school and, you know, so in the summertime, getting up to summer, we'd watch Miyazaki films, you know, and that, oh, yeah. you know, when, once they were done with their projects, which I love because, and Miyazaki captures Japan in the 60s, which is when I lived there. So it was like, um, it's just a beautiful, magical time. It really was a magical time. But yeah, the subtitles are like way off. They have nothing, you know, I mean, I, I can't say they have nothing to do with what they're saying, but very, very different. Yeah, translation's definitely like way off. It's like, damn, guys, like, yeah. And I get, I get what it takes to to make it, you know, with the flaps and and everything with the, you know, with the dubbing. But still, I mean, yeah. if you're gonna do it, do your research. And yes, I will second that. Miyazaki films are aren't they gorgeous? Ridiculous. They're amazing. Yeah. Yes, they yeah. are amazing. Well, and speaking of sub- subtitles and dubbing and stuff, as an actor, it's so funny to see, you know, all these versions all of my, you know, like Elm Street. I keep people send me like from the fans from Italy or from France or whatever, been sh- sending me clips of my you know, birth scene or whatever. And it's like, damn, I can speak all these languages. It's really kind of fun. <laughs> they haven't been horrible with the voice, which is nice. Cause you know, sometimes like when I, Oh you know, yeah. 
like in Japan, you know, SpongeBob, oh. I mean, they have the weirdest voices for the characters. Like, it's like, they don't match it at all. You know, they, I think, I think, um, Mr. Krabs, they give him some like, little voice like, hi, like this, you know, it's just like, weird. Yeah, it's like, not... we got Clancy Brown doing it over here. <laughs> right? it's like, what are you doing guys? Right. I know. That's crazy. Clint, have you noticed that I've done Mr. Krabs on our show a lot? Have yeah, you, have you realized yeah. That? I'm I'm starting to think you're doing it on purpose, like every time to see how long it's going to take sure. me to say like, something about it. Like Clancy Brown, like every time we have it, I'm always. We talked about Pet Cemetery too. I did it. We talked mm -hmm. about that, and I did it. I'm starting to wonder mm -hmm. if there is some kind of a pattern here. I'm getting kind of scared. Are you I trying have to tell us that more. you have crabs? Sorry, no. I, mean, no. I just I think I really want something. Clancy Brown on our show. Mm -hmm. I never know. Which is never going to ever, ever, What ever is happen. that Elm Street poster next to you? I've never right. seen that. So this one is... Damn, I don't know if I can take it off the wall without... You see. don't have to. I don't want it to... Uh, so oh, there, this, I see Felissa behind you. This was... Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Damn it. Who? Uh, Greg Gardner, one of our uh, one of our guys that we, uh, we had in our group. He was... I had him... Um, I had him, I did something for him. I think I, I, um, oh, he, uh, so I used to do a code away. It was called the code away that we had where I would give away, um, codes like digital codes for movies that I bought. So like, if I didn't use them, I would, you know, ask questions, you put out a trivia question, put out a trivia question and whoever got it, I would message, message him with it. The answer, mm, he'd I give you the code. Right. So right. he won one and he said, is there, you know, is there something that, that, you know you want he's like i have a i do custom posters for for movies and i was like well do you have any for nightmare on elm street or friday the 13th and he's like i don't have any friday the 13th ones yet but i have a nightmare on elm street and he sent this and i was blown wow. away i was like that that is so is, i love it it's, yeah it's it's awesome that is um, awesome so yeah so i was like yeah that's uh is does he have it for sale or you yeah have the only yeah one? i'll send you um i'll send you the link to it because yeah, yeah I, i've had a lot of people ask me about this one yeah just that's really it's cool. custom and it's it's yeah it's it's pretty legit i got it and then i'm like uh where do i put Look, it man I, I love that i'm gonna yeah. put it right there so everybody can see it and then i'll have to put it up after we get off here because i know i'll somehow drop it there you go so my, yeah. From yeah don't drop that my only yeah, other right. favorite oh do i not even have it oh i guess i know i don't have it but the, have you seen the one with, um, you know, it's a fan made one um, and it's, it's, it's Amanda. <laughs> that's why I love it. <laughs> it's me. It's Amanda Kruger as um, it, all skeleton coming out of the church doors. I'm about to look it up. Oh, oh it's amazing. I, I have it right up there. Do you want me to, you want to pause? No. You don't no. want me to run away? Did again? you say no, no? If she oh. runs away again, she might not come back. Yeah, I'm no. just gonna go. I'm just gonna go get a snack. Okay, no, I you're not. You're telling me no. Uh, no I can't run no, away. I, I want you to go run away. I want to see that. Oh, you do want me to run away? Yes. Okay, I'll you run, run away. away. Okay, here I go. Me, on God. the other hand, I have this one of a kind. Shut custom up. Custom cardboard cutout. Cardboard. <laughs> yeah, that uh, made purely from recycled cardboard. It is corrugated. In case you were wondering. Fucking lations. Yes. <clears throat> Were you talking about me behind right? my back? No, no I was, was talking about his amazing making cardboard a joke that he has about my oh. my custom piece of cardboard behind me made. Oh, I know. I was like this window. You know, if like, you would have well, put, if you would have did what you said earlier, it would have been custom. If you would have put the eyes, <laughs> the XE eyes, and the and the smiley face, would have been. Yeah, like, yeah. I should have. Or you could have got put something on it. I mean, you really wrote Nightmare on Elm Street back there. <laughs> Holy shit! What? That is really cool. That is stupid cool. And look, so, um, mm. see, right, all the 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 is that the is, what, is, that, is that doves coming out too? Yeah, the doves. That is because awesome. the doves flying away and her scale. Oops, wait. Oh, right I there. can see it. Yeah. That, damn it, that looks and great. You see him That's amazing. Is that so? That was that like a one of a kind frame. deal? I sell, I sell it. Um, oh. I sell it at shows. I can bring you it to the Gettysburg. And I, I looked up and it took me a long time to find the artist. That's the one thing I hate about out of anything. If you find an awesome fan art, it's so hard to track these people right? down. I know. But but I wrote to the guy, um, which the name is on the computer, so I can't You're find fine. it. But anyway, um, yeah. And he was like, oh, fine. Go ahead. Use it. So I just love it. Well, of I'm course, because it's me. 
I'm going to buy that at the at yeah. the show without a doubt. I think. I mean, yeah. she's so cool. I mean, I'm, and Amanda is a skeleton. I mean, skeletons are just cool anyway. It's right, so yeah. cool that looks, I get to be a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It looks really good. He should send you business amazing. cards and you can pass yeah. them out when I, you sell them. I think them. he did. I think he. I yeah. think I or I asked for it anyway. And okay. Then another guy gave me. What the hell? See. PhDs don't get this shit, guys. Right? I know. <laughs> they don't get light up pictures or fan art. That's, yeah. You know what? Again, I you know. Can, you can have your fancy ass certificate on your right. wall, your degree. Right. Man, I'm going to try to have a sign run off street poster. Thank you. See? But yeah, they, you know, anyway, I, I, it's just, I grew up with, you know, the family just, you know, they pat me on the head because, you know, when the family's together, you know, they, the grown-ups, including my dumb little brother, who's nine years younger than me, they all go and discuss important grown-upy things, and I cook. Oh. <laughs> I feel like oh. she, I feel like she, if, if you've ever seen Step Brothers, I feel like <laughs> that's how that is. Like you got the guy that's the asshole lawyer or whatever he, you know, the Catalina fucking wine mixer. You got that guy that sells helicopters. You got this other guy that's amazing, and then there's like the two guys that are dicks that don't do anything. It's like. But I want to be those guys. I don't care about selling helicopters right. or having a boat. I right. want to be the assholes that don't get recognition because they're cool people. Yeah. So not to say you're not to say your family's not cool. It's just yeah, they're cool in their different way, and yeah. and they're not they're not assholes. They're just but you know PhD is kind of you know and especially it's all like art history and and well my my brother um, he teaches Chinese medicine the history of Chinese religion and medicine. I mean, it's okay. Now, see, now that's, cool now that's cool. Now that's cool. PhD. It's cool. And he's a cool dude. I mean, he, he is, he is a cool dude, but you know, and he did actually ask me, he said, will you send me a copy of your, your little book? <laughs> no, I, I don't think he said little. I think I just added that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you got but, one supportive of you. That's good. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the rest, you know, it's whatever. It, mm. It's fine. It's so fine. how many, so how many copies did you, you said 90, 99. Not, no, 90, 90, 90, 91. That's 91. It's a, so there are nine left. One, though, is like crap. I, I, for whatever reason, the last page was stuck together. Hmm. The page that had me on it, there's a picture of me at the end. But anyway, um, but on the, on one book, it was all not doing it. Oh, that's kind of gross. Not doing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Damn it. See, she said it. No, I'm like, no I didn't Ew, say it. Nobody said. But Nobody it was. said anything. It was like stuck together. Yeah. Gross. I didn't think that. I think, you know, I thought they sealed it when it was still hot off the press. Okay, that's really gross now that you said that. I didn't, because it was I weird. Didn't even, when I pulled I it out of the thing, when I, I when I pulled it out of the thing. Jesus See, Christ, we're stuck. done. It's, it, we're it, done. This is too was, late. It's, now it's gone. Now she's all of a sudden going to disappear. She's going to run away again. <laughs> I... It's like, I didn't. But the book was hard. Like it was out. All the rest are like this, all soft. And then this one copy. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I don't know. All right. Huh. Anyone want to buy that one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. I three. I got now. I have three copies. I have the one I bought. Right. The one that the got weird, fucked up. Right. And then the one that's got some unknown substance on it. Fine. I don't care. <laughs> you get mm -hmm. the unknown substance one, and you I get mean, the other. That was the one that's going on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. What did I say in the one to Don? Let's see. What are you gonna get? Uh, oh, anyway. it's, a, it's a yes. It's a lottery. I don't even know what I'm gonna get. I don't. Even, I'm like, can I give you this one back and take the cool one? Yeah, to Don. Uh, I won't tell you what I said. <laughs> yeah, to a face only a mother could love. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it's okay? It's okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay, that's what yeah. she says about baby Freddie. Yeah, so it's all right. right. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. That's, well, well, that that went way off the rails at the end, that and we totally don't even did. care. Like uh, it's just. I mean, well, I don't care. I mean, if anybody else is offended, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think anybody is. No. But uh, we don't want to keep you on here. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Sorry, I looked up and I looked down. I was like, well, anyway. I'm jealous. Was that a good yeah, segue? I am too. <laughs> <laughs> now she the phd thing went out the window because i'm like she just rocked out the harmonica like yeah, yeah. i'm I, yeah i'm i'm damn oh but you know what North. but with my with my strange family so my um my grandfather on my on the chinese side he was um the secretary to chen kai-shek and chen kai-shek was the 
president of China before Mao Zedong took over. Um, and uh, he ended up be, being in political prison and blah, blah, blah. But he was a very, um, he, was, he was extremely famous in Chinese history. And then his father, my great, great grandfather, um, is a warlord or was a warlord. And they actually, in China, they have these, um, they're not movies, I guess it's TV series, but they have these TV series of, of the historical warlords. And, and there's one with, my, with my great grandfather and they have like, it's, it's almost like a, and and I think he actually is a character on some game too, on some board game where they have warlords, mm. but, but they like have fire behind him. And he's like this cool character. Cause he, he was responsible responsible for bringing Mongolia back into Chinese, um, oh. Chinese rule. Yeah. So he's, he had this, this crazy, crazy character with, with a movie about him with flames and everything. Um, yeah. So there's like a lot of craziness in the family on, on, on all the sides. And on my other side, my, my biological father was a Swiss composer and conductor from Basel, Switzerland. And he was the one that introduced um, the American audience to pre-Baroque music. Like, if you listen to it, like that sort of, you know, pre-Baroque, like all that um, Gregorian chanty yeah. type of music and stuff. He brought that because my my father, my biological father, was born in 1896. And it's th speaking of Gettysburg, so when I was in Gettysburg and I was like looking and I'm like, whoa, like Lincoln died in 18, what you did, if you look at it, like it wasn't that long. I think it was like 65. 30. Right. So it's like 60, uh, 30 years after Lincoln dies, my father was born. And it's like, whoa, that makes you feel like history so close. You can touch it. I mean, you know, it it, I mean, we yeah. are such a young country. We, we really are. But my father was mm -hmm. 40 years older than my mom. It's kind of gross when you think about it. But anyway, <laughs> but he was like 60 and she was like 19. I'm like, oh, gosh. Wow. Hmm. But anyway, it was common for a time. That's for, for a time. At Bennington That's College, true. they were a little wackadoodle out there but um anyway yeah so there's there's craziness all over in the family line. is your family like horror movies no they are a horror movie <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> no they don't no none of them do like, like like i said nobody's seen elm street i don't think anyone in my family's seen it that's crazy yeah so nuts yeah that but that's why I love you fans. Hey. You guys hey. appreciate me. You that's like me. Here for. You, you really like, like me. me. You really we like do. me. We Yay. do. We I'm we glad. love you. It's it's I mean, and again, like I said, you know, you're just just a great person whenever you go to these conventions, whenever you're on these interviews, whenever you interact, you're just you're just a great person. And that's that's what makes it oh. that's what makes it worth everything is the fact that you do care, you know, and that's some people just don't, they just do it for you know, I don't even know why they do it. it. They just do it to do it. It's like, well, why even, why even bother? Get out of bed, go to a con, right? Be miserable. Like, why? Yeah, that do I that? don't. Yeah, I, yeah, that I don't get. I mean, most of most of the other actors and you know people that I see at conventions are usually pretty darn cool. You know, laid back, fun people. And if they're not, yeah, I agree with you one hundred percent. Like, what the heck? Like, if you don't really want to yeah. be with fans, why would you do this? Yeah, it's just exactly. weird. Right? Yeah. No, you're right. And. And then, you, Speaking, uh, and then no, also the, the super, you know, so then, okay, so maybe some of the struggling, you know, maybe some people do it just because they desperately need money and it's a way to get some money now, you know, but then there's the other side where there's the actors who are still acting and, and are very wealthy and, you know, when they're cool and fun, it's great. But when they're, when they're not, it's like, and when they charge like crazy amounts and you think you couldn't possibly need the money at this point. Like why, why are you doing this? If you don't love the fans and you're not thanking them for keeping this, whatever it is going, you know, I don't know. I, I have my opinion. No, you, know, you, you make, it's funny that you say it just like you did, because after meeting like Felissa Rose and Dave Sheridan, you know, who, when we were talking, you know, they were, they've been in like 30 films together right. or however many. And I think it's a real, testament to the indie scene like if you want to keep acting right you may not have the opportunities that you did you know for new line cinema or something like that but these people that are that are making these movies on the most minuscule budget mm -hmm. that they possibly can i know damn well you go knock on their door i know you can get a role right you have yeah. you have to be able to because nobody's i mean nobody's that washed up yeah. nobody's that you know, if they even sense well that off. you'd be interested, they'd knock on your door. 
Yeah, yeah. that's true too. Yeah. Well, that that's the thing. So I, actually, to do this film, like it, it Mark, they've all gone FICOR, um, which mm-hmm. I guess I I have to I have to to do the film, um, you know. And I was thinking, well, you know, I I kind of, you know, I've experienced what it's like to not be, you know having the protection of the union but you know it's mm-hmm. different with this it, it's different with this i, I agree I, and especially with you know with the horror film genre like it tends to be a lot of very very low budget although i mean sag insists that they 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 will work with any low budget like they you know even if you have the lowest of low budgets like you know five thousand dollars or something i mean i think they have some sort of caveat for really low budget films but right but yeah no at this point in my career yeah, I'm kind of on the fence, but I, I did agree that I would drop SAG to do it. So I guess I have to do that. <laughs> no, and and again, that's that's like, you know, that's no disrespect to anybody that that does that at all. I mean, again, I, and and you know, especially with what we've seen with this with this indie scene, yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, and and Clint, I say it every time, and I because Clint says it on a on a daily basis. The horror genre, especially the indie horror genre, is so diverse. Right. And you can you can break it up into so many categories. You know, horror comedy, horror, you know, horror romance, horror action, horror sci-fi. It it's just so deep that and, and again, there's no other, if you really think about it and put it in perspective, there's no other genre that does this. You don't have an a, a you know a romantic sci-fi. Like it just that just doesn't happen. And if it does, it's a rarity. Right. But horror just has such deep roots that you can do anything with it. Although romantic sci-fi, as soon as you said that, the first thing that popped to my mind was, uh, what was that with the blue people? Fifth you element? Know. What's that? Fifth element? No, no, no. You know, they're all blue and in the beautiful Avatar. forest. Avatar. Thank you. Oh. That's sort of a... <laughs> what? They're no, in the forest. Just, I got you. I'm like, they're in the forest. I'm like, blue people in the forest, Mike. Yeah, that's right. not very. That's not very many movies. Now I think about it. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a romantic sci-fi. No. Heck, yeah, I, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I would think yeah. of it as. Right. Yeah, what else would you so. call it? Yeah, but anyway, yeah. but yeah, you're right. They're not many. No, it's, it's sure. and and that's and that's what's so cool about horror, just in general, is that yeah. you have that. Like the diversity is just yeah. there. You can pretty yeah. much you could write anything into a horror movie. Right. So I, you know, my that. only thing, my only thing with horror and gore. I mean, I. I get that, you know, it's a huge escape for a lot of people and it, you know, it's a way to, you know, and I, and I, and I've learned from, you know, getting to, to know my fans, like, you know, when things are really shitty in your life, I, there's two different ways you can go. Like you can, you know, if you're going through a lot of really awful, horrific stuff in your own life, you can escape through horror. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think there's, there's something cathartic with it, you know, because, you, you're dealing with ho- horrific situations, but you know, it's not real and you can sort of, I don't know, but then there's another way where, you know, there's so much horror in your life that you want a break from it. Like you want something beautiful and, and, and uplifting and spiritual or happy or fun, you know, which, I mean, I tend to be mm-hmm. like, if I'm going through something bad, I don't go deeper into bad. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. watch right. it on film. I want to watch something totally different and, and, you know, enjoy you know so i kind of had felt um you know that for me it would be important to like just do films that are uplifting that that uplift people that you know you know but then i see the joy that people get in horror you know and i and the community is so amazing so i don't know i i'm, I'm kind of it's a double it's a double-edged sword i mean it really is if yeah, you think you about know, it and especially the, i mean and and especially in terms of the violence like there's so freaking much violence in our world right now, you know, and, and with, with the gun sh- crap going on, like this, just this shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And it's, you know, it's, and it's always white males, you know, killing yeah. masses of people. And it's like, come on country. Like what is going on? Um, you know, I don't want to be contributing to that in any way. Um, but you know, to get your pants scared off is, is kind of fun. Like we all love, like in the summer, you know, that, creepy spooky stuff there's something about it that's just mm-hmm. fun so I, and I, again living in japan you know japanese horror is so creepy and scary yeah, like it's really you know and it they can sometimes have a lot of gore for sure but l- often not you know often nope. it's just you don't see any of it it's all 
inferred and you know what you're what you think is coming around the corner and and just and it's usually you know this this switch of something that should be beautiful into something really creepy which to me is always the creepiest you know little dolls and and clowns and beautiful women like that those turning evil is always much scarier than just a, a monster you know um mm -hmm. so i i, I would agree. absolutely you know independent films i'm 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 game. I'm totally, you know, that's why I wanted to like get all white haired. I was waiting for myself to become like an old haggy lady that I can do like nice hag roles. But I mean, you can always dress me up as a hag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blacking out my teeth. Keep, and... Yes, yeah, so you're going to keep on waiting. Well, mm -hmm. that film that, that the one, so in this Emerald Force that I was telling you that, that it's basically all horror film actors in it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we, so Darren Lee Culps is that guy who's producing it. Um, I think he, he wrote it and, and he's, 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 must be a horror fan because he's you know spearheading and getting everybody in there and i asked you know i wanted to do a creepy role so i'm playing like the wickedest witch <laughs> and she's like all like she comes out of the swamp and she like, eats spiders and you know is all haggly so that's gonna be fun so i'm looking forward to that that sounds amazing already yeah and then there was another sports. film that i was asked to do um a, a, an independent film and and it was about krampus and I wanted to oh. play Krampus and they said, no, they have like a big stunt guy to play. And I was like, can I play? And they said, no. And I said, well, can I at least be his voice? If it's not a real actor, let me at least do the voice. And they said, okay. Cause I think I could do a really fun, cool Damn. voice. Damn. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Damn. Yeah. And then just like a, a, a spooky old lady. I don't know. Why the fuck you want to be a spooky old lady so much? It's hilarious. Like, I don't know. You can't, be fun. Unless somebody dresses your ass up like that, it's not happening because you're not mm. doing a haunt as a spooky ass lady. Because mm. you're not, you're not well, old. You're not you're spooky, but you're not old. Well, not if you want to keep it new and exciting, you want to do things that you've never done before. It's just Don? hilarious because she just says that how she says it. Don, you don't think I'm spooky? I just said I think you're spooky. I said you're spooky. Yeah. But. Man, I'm looking I'm at you. Like, like a wait, how, how does it? How, how can I be looking at you? Am I looking at you now? Am I looking at you now? Okay, here. Yeah. Staring contest. <laughs> I'm gonna win because I got sunglasses on. I'm not taking. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, nah. but it's a. Uh, no, I mean, and again, if you whatever ask you want to do, ask my kids if I can be <laughs> spooky. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> different. that's different, but yeah. No, I mean, again, I mean, I, that's what's cool about how you portrayed Amanda is that it already proves you can play whatever role anybody ever gave you doesn't matter it's fun yeah so yeah that's that's, that's one th i will say if there's anything about horror 95 percent of the movies are fun i mean yeah. that's regardless of what is going on in the world it's still like you said it's an escape it's you can get away from you just shut it down for two hours you don't have to think about it and that's that's what i kind of do with nightmare you know anytime i start it with the first one i don't stop like it's that is just one movie. If you start it, you can't stop watching it. You're going through the whole series. Right. So, and that's, you know, 10, 12 hours that you're not thinking about mm -hmm. anything. So. And so what's the draw with like really like gore, like really bloody, bloody gore? Is it just like the Ugh factor? Like I don't, you know, I really me and me and Clint have had this conversation. <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, it, it, it's the, the thing about it is when, and if anybody, you know, like my wife, she works, or hospital uh clint clint's wife has a little bit of medical experience like yeah we she know watches television she shows with me yeah. me yeah. medical dramas yeah med right. hey that's yeah. experience to me but it, you know <laughs> some of the things they can get it right you know and it doesn't have to be over the top um but i don't know what the uh, you know it, it's cool because i guess it's just i think it's different. the gross out factor yeah, uh, a lot of people like to see really factor. gory stuff just to find yeah. out if they've if if they think it's gross or not you know um and that, right like so many people are so desensitized to that and they're like yeah, i've seen that a hundred times you know um but it's really neat when you see something that that's done differently you know yeah, right. and it's it's yeah. like ooh, i've never seen a, a shot i like it like more realistic that, like i don't, man, I don't, I don't need great you know i don't need somebody's so, throat to get slashed and sometimes i'm just marveling the at the effect work. itself um, that, and and not really yeah. taking joy in the fact that, that I'm believing someone's being murdered on TV, you know. Right. Yeah. Do you think though that desensitizing, like, do you think it does play an act in 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 some of these these because it's usually like these mass shootings tend to always be a white guy, and usually mm -hmm. between like 
you know, 18 and say 30, right. Or maybe 40, yeah. I don't know the age. I mean, it's, you know, and which is totally the, the video game era. Yeah. My son say, no, that's it's stupid. Of course it's not, um, you know, playing these games doesn't violent games has nothing to do with it. But I, I wonder if the, the desensitizing of it does play some part, you know, just that, you know, they're saying that like that, the actually like with those, what is it, AR? F I don't AR know. My, right. AR you know, which has been, which has been doing most of the, most of the killing. They, they have games now, you know, with, you know, sense around or whatever. So you can actually feel the, the sense of the gun, mm -hmm. you know, in your hand and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you, you get that, the reverberation. And, and then if you get so comfortable with that, I just, I don't know. Like what is, you know, people have been killing people forever, but I mean, yeah. like this whole thing of going around, you know, and, and, and taking joy. Well, who knows? I don't know if they're taking joy, whatever the heck yeah. it is that they're doing when they're doing this, like shooting into crowds of people. I mean, we just had it, you know, just right 4th of July again. Right. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. not stopping. It's like these, yeah. what is going on? You know, yeah. I think it's, I, I think that the variables are, I think they're, there's just too many of them that, you know, like you, then you, you start to talk about mental status. You start to talk about, you know, stuff like that. I mean, and, and you say, you actually said it best. I mean, we're, we're a violent killing people. That's yeah. we've yeah. done it for years forever. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest thing is that, you know, taking a, taking a gun in a game and taking a gun in real life is, or, you know, they're, they're two totally different things. Now the desenses, you know, the, the desensitized aspect of it is, yeah, I, I maybe when you're, you know, you're doing these in a game, maybe it's just like, well, it's a, and some people, you know, it's just one of those things. Like if you're playing a game, you have to understand you're playing a game. Right. Some people can grasp that. Now the people that may have the problems, those are the people you got to worry about. Like, well, maybe this is okay in real life. Maybe we can do this. I mean, it, it's, right. it's just so, there's just yeah. so many different ways that people think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, I think it's the, the semi-automatics that are changing the game because, you know, as we've said, we've been violent since the beginning, you know, we, in the Roman times, we'd all eat sandwiches and watch the gladiators kill each other. And, you know, I mean, we've been mm -hmm. mass watching, you know, and in England, you know, they would have all the, Oh, let's go to the hanging. You know, what kind mm -hmm. of sandwich are you bringing dear? You know, and, you know, and we'd like sit there and eat while we're watching people being hung and stuff. But so clearly, you know, that's been around. It's not like we've suddenly turned violent, but, um, but even like hangs, like maybe a mass hanging would be like, you know, the witches, maybe they're hung, you know, burned like six yeah. people at once, but it was, mm -hmm. you know, generally like when you kill people it, up until now, you know, it was like one or two people or you kill your enemy or you kill something. But this, when you have like a, a machine gun, you can mow down like numerous people. I think, I mean, that's kind of what's changed, you know, I mean, even in the old days, you know, the whole idea of, of, yeah. of carrying guns, you know, um, the right to carry arms. I mean, that was written at a time when, when what the arms we had could only shoot one person at a time and then you have to reload and everything. And by that time, the rest of the crowd could run away. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's having this ability to just like mow down so quickly when you, before you're really, whatever weird state you're in and you're right yeah. i mean mental health has a lot to do with it and our yeah. country is not addressing there, the mental health there's definitely an attraction to that type of weapon i mean they go for it every time i mean right. um and um you know I, I can't really speak to it very much but we're talking about you know a, an age group of people that that um is very awkward and uh, a lot of times is uh angsty and broody and um right. you know they're just trying to figure out who they are and um and they, they can't really relate to other people, you know, especially if they're not good at talking to other people and they immerse themselves in a video game culture, you know, and, and an online world. And, and I think that's, that's all they're really experiencing is, is they're, you know, they're not really out living and talking to people and hanging out. If they were, they probably wouldn't have these feelings. They'd have friends and they'd be doing right. stuff, right. you know, but something went wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then there's, I guess there's also the allure of somehow doing something so crazy, you know, and, and violent that you make a name for yourself and people remember you for that. Right. You know, there's somehow that, an attraction to that. You're, you know, that's true. Like I hadn't really thought of that, but there, you know, it is this culture where, 
you know, since since um reality TV started, like when did those reality TV shows start? Like the mid mid nine, let's say probably mid nineties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and where people become celebrities from just being on TV. Like they didn't they're not actors, they don't do anything. They just are celebrities right. from from being on there. And and I guess there is that sort of attraction, sort of a romance, I I guess, this idea that yeah. people recognize you for whatever. What does Don keep disappearing? What is that little is that a witch? What is that thing? What is his little character there? As Vampire Hunter did. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But um yeah. I don't want to take a shot on camera if you must know. Oh. Wow. Well. Wait. I'm trying to be respectful. Wait, what were you doing? Taking a shot. Oh, a shot. What of alcohol. shoots? Oh, oh. Oh, oh my. Oh. Trying to be trying to be respectful. Oh my. Be discreet about it. Yeah. yeah, and I've turned my camera off. Like, pff, might as well just get up and walk away. <laughs> there, you mm -hmm. there you go. No, there I go. mean, yeah. and here's yeah. and here's another thing. So, here's what's really wild is, and and this this kind of like joins the conversations together. If you look at every almost every major killer in horror movies, how many of them use guns? Right. True. Yeah. No. Almost damn near zero. They're usually right. hands on. They're pretty passionate about what they're doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're John Wick, you use a pencil. <laughs> that's right. That is true. That is yeah. true. But that's that's another thing. It's like Yeah, no. You know, there horror movies you don't you don't see you, I mean, usually the the hero of the movie has a gun of some kind, but right. the killers don't. No, you're right. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Good point there. Yeah. So I, it's, Yeah. It's just one of those things. I mean, it's it, it, and, and Clint Clint brings up a good point, that attraction. You know, nobody wants to get a forty four Magnum because nobody can shoot the damn thing. Right. You know, but again, when you can go in a, into a, a whole widespread, you know, mm -hmm. uh, event, doesn't take a lot of aiming. Yeah. yeah. It should. No, they should just have a sword. People should have the right to I'm down, You know, I'm down for that. I'm yeah, so down for that. Because, again, first of all, you have to have skill, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, and then and people have a chance to run away. You can only, you know, I guess you could, if everyone was asleep or something, or if you went into a meditation hall, <laughs> and I guess in one fell swoop, you could decapitate right. everybody. But, no, generally, yeah. yeah, you could. Okay, this is a totally weird thing, but um, if you guys look, do you have the same screen as I do with your yeah. background and everything? Uh -huh. So next to Don... I guess that's your shadow, Don, and then it kind of melds over onto that. Is that Freddie's shoulder? I don't know if you see what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah isn't yeah, that yeah. weird? Like, oh, no, no, you got to move your head back. Move, move your head go. back. Wait, no, the other way. Come forward. Come forward a little more. Anyway. <laughs> I know what you, I, see, I you see know what, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's for, forming this whole little. That's bizarre. <laughs> she uh, sees shit that I'm just like, oh. Damn. Oh, well, the back of your chair has a weird little face on it. But anyway, we won't go there. Okay. <laughs> so. No, I mean, good conversation without a doubt. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think, um, and I, I would, I would never blame anything for, you know, making somebody kill somebody. Cause that's no, yeah. just not, that's yeah. just not, it's not plausible. And, and, and no, any I way guess only, only they really know why they did it. Yeah. But, yeah, for but, sure. yeah, yeah. I mean, to, like, in, to in, yeah. No, yeah, go ahead. One thing of its own, you know, like video games alone certainly wouldn't do it. The availability of, you know, it's not the, as as gun owners say, it's not the gun. Of course, it's not the gun itself, but but there is something to be said for, you know, I don't know what, you know, what are common citizens running around with war weapons, you know, that, that's a little different than, you know. To a lot of, and a lot of people have said that. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people bring that up and. You know, it, I mean, the, it, to me, it, it, it was designed for a certain purpose. It was designed to kill a ton of people, right? You know, enemies, trying to get as many enemies as you can. And if you're not in a war zone, you know, but I guess in, in their world, they are, right? In their yeah, world. well, I mean, the biggest thing, too, is that, you know, right. people, radicals get it in their head. You know, it, the Second Amendment, it just feels like has yeah. been crossed out, rewritten, crossed out, rewritten, because they talk about, you know, the, the reason why we're allowed to carry arms, it's not just it's to battle a tyrannical government. That's the biggest thing that people Our, yeah. will, will throw out there. Yeah. And they, they forget that. That's why people have, fear, AR, but they forget. Fear has a lot to do with how many of, get purchased. Exactly. You know, yeah. um, 
every time we, you know, somebody thinks that there's going to be legislation that actually limits their ability to purchase something, they run right out and buy more. Yep. And, bought oh, and, buy it. Yeah. and it's never yeah. happened. And it's, and I, it's not going to happen. No. It's like, you no, guys, I don't know why everybody keeps worrying about it. Yeah. You, know, you guys are worried about things yet. that aren't going to happen. If it hasn't happened yet, yeah. it's not going to happen. I mean, yeah, it's just not. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And I'm and sure again, there's a bunch of them that think that they're modern day Minutemen. you know, that, mm-hmm. uh, they uh, stockpile yeah. all these arms in the event well, that they're, there's something to fight man. someday. They're gonna... My old man. Right. That's terrible. I have like four guns and none of them are yeah. ARs. Yeah. Right. So. My sister had, she, she, I don't know if she's, I don't, I doubt if she's gotten them back, but she had a whole lot of guns, but she was a farmer. She lives in Canada and she had, you mm-hmm. know, she's, she hunts and she has, or had goats and, you know, she needed, sure. she needed her, her guns, but she, was going through mental issues, you know, very suicidal. And Mm -hmm. the RCMP came and they took them, took them all away. Um, Damn, really? Yeah. But they do for a period of time. Like if you, in Canada, if people, I mean, you know, and that's always the tricky part. I don't think it can just be like somebody, a neighbor just saying, oh, I think she's mental, mental. Uh, That would be scary. (laughs) That'd become like a witch hunt, right? You know, but, but if there's, if there's, um, you know, hospital, cooperation that yes she's yep. been in in here right, trying to, you know, right. a, attempted suicide so there was a situation like that and they took away her guns and i'm telling you if she had a gun she would have blown her brains out you know and that's the, that's the one thing oh we're getting out this is getting depressing no but no you know, no no no, no. It's, a, it's a good conversation well it's an important conversation you know the the um the other thing that's different with a gun is in suicides you know it's it's a pretty high amount of suicides fail like a vast amount of suicide attempts fail Mm -hmm. but when it's a gun mm -mm. it's like 99 percent success Mm -hmm. and you know and especially think in the hands of a teen where oh my god i'm gonna die my life is over just from you know whatever and they really feel that like the jeans don't fit or you know they wore the wrong whatever to school and they my first boyfriend my first boyfriend dumped me you know and they're you and they, their hormones are raging and, you know, everything is pretty radical for them at that time. And if you're suicidal, you're feeling, and you know, you've been picked on at school and horrible things are there, going on. There, there's, there's a harbinger right there. Bullying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That goes yeah. a long way to messing somebody up. And that's always been around too, unfortunately, as we know. And, you know, in some ways it seems like this younger generation is really much more open than we were, you know, we meaning old ladies like me and, um, you know, like, like us, well, you know, I mean, you know, it's your, your, your sexual preference, your gender, all that kind of stuff has become so much more open. You know, I don't, mm-hmm. I mean, do people get teased for being gay? Probably in some places, but you generally gotta, not. Gotta believe it. Oh, really? Still? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, it just okay. depends. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's depends like, you where know, you are. You've always yeah. had homophobes out there. I, mean, I guess so. Yeah. But I mean, well, I live in New York, so, you know, everyone's very, you know, very liberal and open here for the most right. part about that kind of stuff. Right. But, um, but you know, and also just, I mean, it seems like the people are, this younger generation is a lot more accepting. Like if you, you know, um, uh, physical and mental disabilities and, you know, all kinds of stuff, it just seems a lot more accepted than it was in my day, but yeah, bullying is here to stay. Unfortunately, that's, mm-hmm. that's human nature. So, but anyway, the point is when you're, you know, at your wits end and you have a gun, it's just so much quicker, like in that s- split moment. Whereas if you're like trying to hang yourself and the stupid rope breaks and you're, you know, whatever, then you have time to go, Oh God, that was dumb. I don't really want to die, but you don't have that chance with a gun. It's like, boom. And yep. it's done. You know, it's even so have funny that, that you mentioned that too, because look at, <laughs> I love, we can, and we can still bring this back to horror movies. We can still reel back into horror movies. Look at suicides and horror movies. How are they done? Usually with a gun. Mm. Like, look at zombie movies, especially. Right. You're cornered. You don't know what to do. You know you're shit out of luck. Mm-hmm. Um, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. You know, Day yeah. of the Dead, I'm thinking of, you know, yeah. the one guy. Oh, shit, I can't remember his name. Big dude. You know, he runs mm-hmm. into the room. He's like, well, I'm screwed. He, he starts shooting people, and he's like, well, you know, I'm going to die, so I shoot myself. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's how a lot of people do it in horror movies. It's... Right. Of course, the killer at some point, you know, gets a lot of them, but it's like, well, I'm, I'm in a, a, a hopeless situation. Right. Yeah. What do I, you know, just, just end it. Yeah. You know, suicide and, and horror movies with guns is pretty, it's, it's a pretty regular thing. Right. So actually we, we, I talk about it 
In you my really? Book. Yeah. yeah. Well, because she, Amanda wants, you know, she considers suicide numerous times in her life, but she's a nun. So it goes against her. It goes against you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Her belief yeah. system. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting timing wise that, you know, because, because she's a nun, of course, like, you know, as a nun, she would never have an abortion. <laughs> okay. Now let's not right. go on to that. <laughs> I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not traipsing yeah. down there. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, what's going on in our world. But anyway, but no, she was a lady of the past and, you know, yep. yeah, wasn't happening. Wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Shouldn't have happened. Right. Exactly. Oh, look what's right in front of me. This is so funny. Can you read that? Or no? You mom. are the best mom in the world. Aww. Right. I don't know why that was here, but it was anyway. Oh, I think it was maybe it was Freddie was holding it. Says love, Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Terrible boy. Anyway. I love it. God, it's so great. Ugh. Ugh, fucking love it. Yeah. So great. That's good. Man, what a good conversation that was. People and people don't, you know, people they they veer away from that because yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets argumentative. I mean, yeah. and and you know, I'm I'm a gun, I'm a gun owner, like, but I'm just not one of yeah. those people that I have to run out and buy a, a AR fifteen because you know, I I don't think we're gonna have a tyrannical government in the next fifty fucking years. And if we do, yeah. it is what it is. What am I gonna do about it anyway? So question for you. So when if you see, have you guys familiar with Moms Demand Action, the ladies in the red shirts? They're at most of the rallies and whatnot. I've I've seen them at rallies. I've been seeing them, yeah. 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 So oh, I'm one of those. And you know, and it's uh I'm one of those. Um and it's 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 Moms Demand Action for gun safety. And um and it's so funny because you know when when we try to talk to people, I, it, they're people in Moms Demand Action who have guns, and you know it's it's not about taking it's never not about, about taking, taking guns, guns away. away. You know, it's about trying to find safety measures to, you know, like for example, one of the things like the part that I'm involved with um, is this training. It's called Be Smart, and it's to get it get our um, to try to get our our society and culture to to a point where we feel comfortable. You both have kids or do either of you have kids? Or? kids. I, I do. Got kids. I do. Okay. What age? Four. Uh, she's four. She's four. So, mm -hmm. so when, so at four, she probably hasn't gone to play dates without one of you there. No. Or you usually, when are you go? Right. But so she's going to come right. to a point where she's going to be going to friends' houses when she, you know, without you guys. And when that happens, like usually parents, you know, we will say like, if your kid has a nut allergy, you're like, oh, you know, you let the person know my kid has nut allergies or if they're allergic to cats, do you have any pets? You know, and there's no issue with asking that, but we don't feel comfortable asking, do you guys have a gun in your house? And what we want to do is get to the point where it's just a conversation. Like, do you have a gun in the house? If you do, Oh, okay. Is it, how do you is keep it, it locked up? Is, is it, it locked it, up? And yep. you know, they're separate. Okay. And if you feel comfortable with that, you have them over. Like, why don't you have the right to ask that? You should have the right to ask. Right. That. That's a pretty big thing. Like if you're, if you're worried that your kid might, get an allergy from their cat well what if they you know because these horrible stupid again that's another horrible thing that happens with guns when they're not properly stored is countless and countless of kids have shot each other shot adults you know shot yeah. themselves because the guns are not stored properly you know and these mm -hmm. are things these are these are weapons that can kill so if you're going to have them be responsible and most you know i i would hope most gun owners are you know, and, and the NRA certainly had started off as a very um, educational. I love, I love how she said that. How yeah. it started off because, man, they have fell off. The yeah. But, you know, when cliff. they started, it was it was all about gun safety and, you know, responsible ownership and teaching people, you know, how to properly use a gun and whatnot. And then yeah. it got bought out and turned into something that is not very nice, in yeah. my opinion. But, yeah. um, you know, so. Anyway, but that's kind of the things, you know, we need to be able to talk about stuff without everyone always getting up in arms up in arms think of that i do anyway. like i do like uh, i definitely like where that's where that's going especially you know like you shouldn't be afraid to ask somebody especially if it's your kid that's going my over. kid's coming over yeah. to your house yeah yeah i need to know if they're going to be safe shouldn't because you again, be allowed to know that say right. if they sure. if you know parents leave do something and oh well my kid's old enough to watch your kid right and then shit hits the fan it's like yeah at least no. i know if I if the, if you guys decide to leave and whatever, right? I know that I can trust my what kids and I don't have to worry about that because your guns are locked up or yeah, in a safe. And it often or happens mobile. with with the parents are home, they're downstairs or whatever, and the kids are running around playing and they find it, you know. And that's the thing is, 
if you can, if you ask the person, you know, and, and that's the scary thing as a parent, you know, forget even guns, like anything, like the, the first right. few times you're letting yeah. your kid go to somebody's house and you're not going with them. It's a scary thing as a parent, you know, you're, I've cried when I went you know, into school at the third grade and then I had to call my mom. Uh, you know, it happens. Right. So, so, but I think like, if you call, you know, if you're talking to the person, Oh, I'm going to bring Joey over. Thanks so much. Can, you know, can we bring anything? Oh, you know, if, Oh, you know, and then another thing, like if you have a swimming pool, is there, is a fence around yeah, it? You, you know, those are important things. Just yeah. checking those things out so you can make a, you know, a, a, a good decision based on what the information you get. And I well, think, again, and you, you bring it up right there. It's like, well, the parents of the other kid, Right. Might not think these things. Right. Like, oh, we don't have a fence around the pool. So right. we probably shouldn't leave these kids unsupervised at any time. Exactly. And you have that, you know, then you can politely say, oh, okay, I'm just not really comfortable with that, you know, or, unless you promise me they're going to stay inside or, you know, y you can make those choices and, you know, just you don't have these horrible tragedies. And, and I think in terms of the gun question, like if it's a cool, responsible gun owner and, and you, 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 you routinely lock everything up and you have your you know um ammunition separate and whatever and there's and we've had we've had experts show us lots of ways that you can get if, if you do it right that you know they have the ones that you can use your fingerprint just you know you hold your hand to unlock it you can lock and load your gun really fast because people argue oh you know if there's a burglar downstairs there's not enough time if my um ammunition is separate from my weapon it's like no they don't have to be separate separate like in, in two different rooms just both of them locked not together and they they showed us how they can really lock it really hello roly sorry we have a here's my boyfriend decided to join us hello roly you gonna say hi ah. roly anyway um but but my 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 thinking is that like if you if you said to the other parent you know you Oh, so, you know, do you have a dog? Do you have a blah, 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 blah. And do you have a gun? <laughs> and if they get all funky and weird, like they're like, you know, then you kind of, it's a good way to get to know the person. And if they're, but if they're really cool, they're like, yeah, we have, we have guns, you know, my husband's a cop or, you know, whatever it is, or yeah. Um, and you say, how is it kept? Oh, it's totally safe. We have it locked up. And you can, it just gives you a feeling of what that home is going to be like. It, it just gives it, you, you know, one more does. bit of, it, you know, you're, you're right. but if they got all weird about it, like, why are you asking? You know, and got all strange and weird. Then, then I don't know. Then maybe you. My like, shotgun's yeah, behind I the might, door of I my might bedroom. Think twice. Right of what, whether you want to there. Yeah. Yeah. If you just so don't anyway, want to answer that, you know, maybe. Yeah, like. It's yeah. like, well, it's nice talking yeah, to you. I'm so going to take my cute. kid home now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, so. again, I mean, and, and that's the thing, and and it's the golden rule. You know, no parent wants to get that phone call. You hear it all the time. Oh, no. Yeah. And it's like you know that that one time. That's yeah. You don't know what you're going to get, and it's terrifying. It, it it really is. And again, I don't, I don't have kids. I have fourteen of those that you have walking around. Oh, do you? Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Crazy cat man. Yeah, it's we're like crazy cat man and wife. Crazy cat man wife, right? Yeah. Um, did you did dog. you see? Did you see the? Um, I think I posted it on either Instagram or Facebook. I can't remember, and it was um, it was. Uh, Batman, <laughs> and he's he's standing there, and he goes, "Oh, Catwoman!" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're not quite you're, what you're I'm not, expecting. Expect it. And it's this old lady. <laughs> it's this old lady with hundreds of cats. You know, she's all boobs down to here. You know, and whatever <laughs> old lady. You know, and he's like, "Oh, Catwoman!" Like, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> so you're the crazy Catman. Awesome. I mean, I I guess I just don't have boobs that sag to the floor where I can step on them. But uh -huh. yeah, I got 14 cats. Yeah. So. And your unshaven um, legs when you wear your bikini that's but. right yeah a aka yeah. scratching posts so um <laughs> yeah screw that Oof. no ew his legs <laughs> yeah that's what he's going with ouch okay thanks come on jesus mm -hmm. oy, 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 oy. Mm -hmm. all right so what else do you guys want to know what do you want to discuss <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nothing. I feel like if we keep you on here on, like any that, longer, we're going to have to much buy we're you gonna door dash or something. I yeah. know, right? Yeah. No, I'm getting kind of sleepy. What time is it now? Anyway, it is nine twelve. Oh boy! All right. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so. so these are going out in the mail tomorrow. Okay. Wonderful. I yeah. can't wait because I'm gonna read that before I come see you. Yeah. So Don. Number... Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, you. You weren't the one that bought two, right? I did not buy two. <laughs> I would have. I swear to God. But I did. if I did, I swear to God it was on accident. Yours wasn't the one that's... 
<laughs> if, if, Jesus. If We're she, back to that horrible one. I would but. fucking die if I stuck my face in the book that had the sticky page. I would be like, <laughs> wow. No, this isn't the sticky page right, one. No, I was no, like, no. I am no, no, not no. taking that chance. At no, all. I, I, I've, no, honestly, I have always sniffed books. I'm a book sniffer. That's like with cars. Like, I love smelling cars. Like, I'm like, if it's got a new car smell, I'm in. But if it smells like shit, I'm not, yeah. yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Books, yeah. action figures, anything new. Mm-hmm. That's well, there's gotta, di- well, there's different types of print, right? And some smell really good. Mm-hmm. They used to be these Beatrix Potter books when I was a little kid, and they just had this beautiful paper i don't know they just smelled really good <laughs> so I'm, mm-hmm. mine's sort of it's kind of interesting it's like money it's like fresh money like yeah, yeah i know what she's going through clint you can look at us like we're weird as shit i'm telling you <laughs> See, that's cool what man. is going on there you have no idea Ooh. see i don't have any idea because no, i'm gonna you need can't that tell book. what that's about yeah i'm gonna need that book mm-hmm. look like something with somebody's dad oh good yeah somebody's mm-hmm. dad oh and then okay here let's see I'm going to tell you. Wait, yeah. where was it again? Okay, so somebody's dad. Go test me. And there's he's wearing glasses. And what do you see? I see a child in the glasses. Okay. All right. Anyway, yeah. so. I can't wait. Okay. <sighs> can't wait. Clint. So got, the book is out. Nine. Hmm? You can order what? one of the nine that's still left. I can. Yeah, that's true. Can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where do people go to do that? Since we're talking about So, um, <clears throat> they they email nightmare oh on elm street five no elm oh street God. five yep uh you're the, the, the oh shit i got it <laughs> elm street five damn it fan, fan yeah, mail uh, fan mail that's it yep yeah. elm street elm five, street five fan, fan mail at, at gmail.com gmail. Gmail. Com. and they just say that they want it and ellen will give them all their information Wonderful. She's in PA. What's that? Is she in PA? Uh, no, no, she's it's PA. What? Ellen oh, F. personal Man, assistant. PA. Personal assistant. That's what I was like. I read it too fast. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, oh, there are a couple of bloopers, and I watched your video, and I'm like, they're not bloopers. That's gonna happen. But I'm like, damn, guys, especially the whiteout part. That was I whited weird. out a hundred books. I sat That's there. So weird. But I just, you know, I because my, my husband was like, just. No, I don't, don't white out the book, but I it's a stupid sentence. Like to have that sentence in there, you know, just then you read the next page and it's like that's really dumb. So those so of you who are, don't know what I'm talking about, um, there was a sentence where you know it talks about something that happened in 1959, and then you go to the next chapter and it says two years passed and it was now 1959. <laughs> and this isn't a time travel story, so well, I mean right. uh, I would have been see, I would have been in either way. I'm like, oh yes. Right. Time that's, traveling. I'm that's in. True. Well, she does. I mean, but is she both she and Freddie can time travel once they're dead, but while she's writing this book. What? Yeah. Well, they do. So, they time travel. What do you you know that? It's, it's amazing right. though. It's like yeah. the, the dream thing, I know, but still like Yeah, it's really I, cool. I'm a sucker for time traveling anything. Wow. Uh, I love it. Did you read that book uh where the guy is time traveling back to when when Kennedy was shot. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. No, it was that a Stephen it. King book? Yeah, it was the Stephen King book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no uh, I didn't read my that wife, one. my He's wife trying, got huge into to... Outlander and got oh, yeah? me sucked into it. I'm like, uh, fart. Oh, I think it's like eight books. Like you got my attention span for two. You better make it good. And yeah, I'm like five books in. Oh boy. Wow. Meg had me now. Now Steve Alton with Meg had me. I was like, oh. Okay, that's just a giant ass shark, and Clint knows I'm, I'm a shark fanatic. He's a sucker for sharks. Shark hey, three weeks, yeah. Clint. Got yeah. Shark Week. Shark um, Week. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. So would Better you go? In, would you go into a cage? No. Uh, fuck it. It'll be on my bucket list, maybe. They have. People. What is that thing behind you? Like with a little orange? Is it like a little white doll with an orange head? That guy. Yeah. Uh, that is. Falling over, whatever. That is oh, a Patricia. Patricia Tallman doll that she oh, actually signed wow. at Living Dead Weekend. Oh, there you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. She hangs out with yeah. me. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. So, so I knew yeah. I knew well, someone was going to ask about that eventually. Like, dude, yeah, you got I, a doll behind you? Tell that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, after Phantasm in August, I will have a lot of cool things to to show you from that people have made. So we'll have well, to. Do they, do they bring a lot of stuff to you? They're yeah, they're making. All, I I keep hearing all these different things that that fans are creating and making awesome. and doing and, and stuff. See, that's so. got to make you feel good. I mean, seriously, oh, it is people cool. make things for you. That's pretty badass. It is. It is. I mean, even this, I mean, I did pay for this, but not, not half of what it's worth. Yeah. It was a woman in Turkey. I had found, mm. I, I saw her on, you know, I wanted a baby Freddy for a long time, but I, I can't, you know, I couldn't afford the, the real full body the one. Prop. That looks yeah. amazing for just Doesn't somebody it? that just that made good. it. That looks ridiculous. Yeah. It's really she, good. You know, she, she is amazing. It's this woman. Um, and and I I give you know I say her name on on Instagram where I have a picture of it, but I just I'd been flipping through Instagram and it's this woman I think she lives in Turkey, and she does these, and she's really beautiful looking too by the way you guys. But anyway, um, but she she makes little models of things like and it wasn't they weren't all they weren't monsters from movies that I know maybe they're European monsters I don't know mm -hmm. but but she also had you know some actors like Bella Lugosi and 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 um uh. What's Boris his name? Karloff. Boris Karloff and things like that. And so I just wrote to her and I said, wow, your stuff is really cool. Do you know Nightmare on Elm Street? Would you be interested? Would you make me a baby Freddy Krueger? And I showed her pictures and she said, oh my gosh, I would love to. So she made it for me. That you is, know, it's I, insanity. Yeah, I just paid for the material, but I think she's willing to make them for people. So anyway, that's, I just think, it's, it's, look just, at those eyes. It's so dumb looking. It's like, I mean, as far as good, that's that means good. That means good. Yeah, it means good. Fire. It's so, yeah. it's stupid good. My God, that's, all you do is send her pictures? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's insanity. Yeah, that's there's nuts. so much talent. I mean, my God, there's so much talent out there. Yeah, no question but, about uh, that. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. I'll see you guys in, in Gettysburg. I. Yep. That's probably going to happen. Okay. Without a doubt. Yep. All right. and, uh, have fun in Spain. Have fun in Florida. Absolutely. And then hopefully Thank you'll have you. fun in Gettysburg where the two of yeah. us will see you. Um, definitely going to gonna drop by and, and say hi at your table um, and probably spend some money while we're standing there because that's what you do. It always happens. <laughs> there you it go. Always happens. Always oh, we have, my, we, we have the glow in the dark uh, Freddy. Uh, no, uh, do you have any of the things Freddy. left? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those pins, yeah. Because yep. I... Mm -hmm. I, I, I I sold a few when I first started, and I haven't. They've just been sitting in a box, so I have tons of them. Oh, I dude, I was, yeah. I was, I was so worried. I was yeah. like, I want one of those so bad. Yeah, they're they're cool. So yeah, the Definitely. horror gods. They do. They did a new one for Mark too. What did oh, they do? Oh, that's right. Him? They did. They yeah. did. Yeah, he'll yeah, be his, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll sell mine. I'll sell mine cheaper than he will. <laughs> I'm gonna buy both of them. Either <laughs> there way. You go. Yeah. But uh, well, no. it's funny. So well, my agent Peter was like, you know, you got to uh -huh. sell it with your autograph. You know, if people are buying a lot of things with the autograph, because the autograph, you know, is, is the expensive thing as it is. So I don't know. People can just buy the pin. They don't have to do the autograph. You got to make your money. Somehow. Well, yeah. I, mean, I know. Peter, I know. Peter's looking out for you. I know he is, but that's yes. right. That's all right. right. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, once when? my once the college is all paid for, I've only got one more son's college, three more years to go. <laughs> that's the big I feel thing. Like she, I feel like all of a sudden we're going to get some kind of an email. It's, it's an Indiegogo. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> No, no, but, no. All right, be, well, college is done. Everything's half price now. From now on. That's right. Fifty percent off. Yeah. Or help me pay. Help me pay for the. the, the what? So, I mean, so your so your kids are just done in college. Like it's all paid for and they're going. Yeah, well, one's they already done and one started. One started. So still, yeah. He's a he's a in Boston Northeastern. It's expensive school. I bet seventy five thousand a year. I mean, who pays for that kind of stuff? That's nuts, man. It's insane. I, this country get, is... Honestly, they need to, they need to write that shit off of anything. Yeah, write that great. out of anything. Debt like that. Seriously, that you know that's education. Know. Seriously, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. well, it's we been talk, wonderful. Can, yeah, it has been. <laughs> yeah. fan, I don't. I don't have a word for yeah. it. She said wonderful. I don't yeah. even have what stupendous, phenomenal, fantastic, mm -hmm. bodacious. Uh, what was it? Bodacious. <laughs> it was bodacious and bombastic was the other one. Mm -hmm. bombastic, all so, bombastic sounds a bit like a some kind of a flu or something or a disease, isn't there? A it disease definitely like sounds that? like it definitely sounds like something where you're probably throwing up blood. So yeah, you're probably look, right. Look, look at Don's shadow now. Now it looks like you're giving me the finger yeah. on the wall. Yeah, Can yeah. you see that? I oh, Jesus. Christ. Look at that. Your whole body's oh now it changed. There, yeah. there you go. 
Now, now I know how to now I know how to control it. Ooh, there, yeah. ooh, There's your chair. Do, 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 yeah. do, do, Twilight do. Zone. Yeah. Love Twilight Zone. Clint. Oh, I Rap. love Twilight Zone. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that'll be a whole other. Do you know what? We'll there come you go. on. We'll yeah. come on. on. We'll talk about Twilight Zone we'll next talk time. About Twilight Zone. Oh, Absolutely. what about? Oh, sorry. Okay. No, go, no, go. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So uh, I can't think of his name. I can picture him where he all he wanted to do was read, 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 and he's always being caught. Yes, thank you. And then oh, remember? And then you know. Everyone's died, and he's all excited. He's alone in the world, There's and he time. goes to the library. There's he's so excited, and he breaks his freaking glasses. <laughs> oh Bye. God! Yep. But you know what? It's life. That's Mr. Murphy. That's the. the... Yes. Somebody should lying. do a movie. Is there been a movie? There should be a horror film about Mr. Murphy and his damn law. <laughs> Murphy's law. All gotta, like... Go on. All you gotta do is go on TikTok. Oh yeah, they got all kinds of Murphy <laughs> stuff. I mean, uh, people know. have that shit have to them every day. Murphy's law. Oh, do they? oh, really? Yeah. yeah. There was movies kind of like that. They just didn't call it that. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it like, was just, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, to you a just know that. To you... a, yeah. To a degree, I'd say that the Final Destination movies were kind of like that, where <laughs> anything that could go wrong did go wrong, and it, it, and wrong. it went perfectly together like some Rube yep. Goldberg Matrix or something to kill you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here's but... another horror film I did. Oh, sorry. I know. We keep trying. We no, go, 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 go. No, okay. No, GPS and our, our weird, you know, our weird little um, devices that tell us where to go. Like, we mm -hmm. just blindly go, and I'll just drive down That's any right. old street. She's like, turn left, turn right, you know. And I always think to myself, oh, my God, like, what a perfect way, like, for some evil murderer to... And, and, you know, they, they've had a lot of films now where, you know, some evil mind gets into everyone's phones, right. Yeah. You know, and controls the phones. So everyone's being like diverted to some place, you know, so we follow the GPS and it, and it just takes everyone down some weird freaking highway into some weird old yeah. abandoned she warehouse. Does make, where, she makes a damn good you know? point. Like, well, it would have right? to be Just like the machine or lumber man. Right. It would have I mean, to be like, like the ways app or something. Because, right. That's what I know, mean. Like ways or yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Ways or, or what's that? Because yeah. users can change oh. it um, by making right. suggestions. It should be, and it should be, it should be called way, ways away. Is what yeah. The should be called. Way, yeah like ways to die. Ways away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ways, ways to die. W A Z. -E. There you go. All right. Let's write it. You guys damn. We'll write it. Oh, because yeah. one, one time, I mean, this actually wasn't even using ways. This was just signs. But um, one time my husband and I were um, visiting my grand. We were going to go visit my grandmother in Washington, D.C. And, you know, we love a good garage sale, or at least we used to until I wanted to clean out the house. But anyway, um, and we, you know, there was a sign garage sale, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it shows some arrows. So we go down and then it shows another arrow. And then and we just kept driving and it was ridiculous. Like it went That's on to like 20 for miles. Oh my God. And then we're, oh, he's giving us the finger again. But anyway, so we're just <laughs> driving down all these random roads following these signs. And we're like, you know what? They're probably sitting around in some, um, what's that thing that flies around the That's camera? Right. A drone, drone, yeah. They're probably oh, like drone. on drones, like giggling and laughing, going, look at those idiots. Yeah. Like, let's see how far they'll actually follow our signs. Because it just kept yeah. going further and further. And we're just following these signs. And finally, I said, you know what? It's probably some murderer in some warehouse, you know. Clint, that reminds yeah. me of when, we were, when like I was driving of the trying corn. to find your ass. <laughs> yeah, they right. all the street signs. <laughs> right, right. I kept trying yeah. to find Clint the yeah. one day in D.C. And I couldn't find him. And he was right where I was at. And I kept, I drove around. How, how many times did I tell you? Six? No, I drove I around looking for you. That's right. That's right. And then finally, like, I'm parked right here. I was like, I'm, I'm like, parked right uh, here. All right. I don't run to see. And I'm like, <laughs> Going hey, around, Nick. driving around, around, around. I'm like, damn, where are we at? And I followed him to the garage that was like, what, half a block away? Because I, I could around find the corner. It. Yeah. yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. damn it. I hate that. But yeah. yeah. All right. Ways so we'll, to die. ways to die. We'll, we'll work on that script, right? That sounds, dude, that I'm not even lying. That sounds badass. Yeah. <laughs> That's almost that's, like 5G zombies. And then when you get to the end, like who's what's 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 going to be there? Hmm. A creepy old lady who looks like she's only forty, but she's actually <laughs> one hundred and twenty-five. Yeah. This sounds. Awesome. Well, that's how she stays so young. <laughs> that's it, right? Cause yeah, because she, 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 she gets people lost on ways. Fuck! This is a great movie. This right? is fantastic. But it can't be that she eats them to stay young. That's so stupid. Because no, they she always got do it. that. No, yeah. she, you just uh. As, it, it's as, their essence like what is it's it as, yeah. uh it's as many miles as they go yeah that on gps that that's like, so if they go 50 miles she's 50 years younger <laughs> okay okay now it's getting a little <laughs> this sounds amazing this, this is getting real now all right it's getting real okay but, well let's all look you guys are do we all have the same screen like you two are on the top yes we're okay, on top. so you guys look down and i'm gonna look up at you does it look like like the Brady Bunch? Are we looking at each other now? Bit, yeah. 
<laughs> Clint, you got to sign us off, baby. Yeah, that's right. You got you to so make thank sure you. We, get, yeah. we get her out there. That's right. So thank you so much for joining us one more time. Uh, Beatrice Bupley, uh, it was fantastic having you on the show today, and we will definitely see you at the end of August. Um, and I'm just going to say on behalf of Don, don't let the bad ones ruin a good time. And as for myself, I hope you find movies that haunt you. Good night. Woo. Good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.